stopped it. I, I stopped it, and now I'm putting it on the cloud instead of my computer because I changed. Oh, my can I share my screen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's do this. Boom. boom, boom. We'll see that. All right. I wanted to do this it? so bad. This is what I wanted to do on the stream of streams day. I wanted no, to like video. you're not your video is oh, not on. Yeah. Look at okay. this. All right, okay, so are you, oh, can you see go. my screen yet? Yep. Oh, no, we can. Okay, so basically, you're looking at me. Watch this. Ready? Now I'm going live. Ready? Look at this. Testing is stupid. So this is like being John Malkovich. Ready? So I wanted to join the Discord server like this. But my audio didn't oh, work in Linux to where ah. I could have like a group of people all coming in under one mic through oh. a live feed. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't think you realize this because you're not in the in the Eden's memory group, but they did discuss about about joining your stream, right? So I I don't know if they talked to you about that, but the thing is that it seems it, it, it converged with the with the EOS fire fireside chat and the other the other event that I don't remember which it was, it was um, they were saying that it was very difficult for them to, to participate, but they would have loved, they would have loved to do it otherwise in, in any other mo moment. Oh, you know what? That's and, perfect. Uh, That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So just for you to know that it's not like, like, like people ignored you. They didn't, but it was difficult to, to attend. There were a lot of things at the same time. Yeah, no, totally. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to stream you guys, okay? Watch this. I switched the windows around. Oh, Oscar, 10 seconds, man. Oscar, in the oh, chat. That's me. Hey, uh, yeah. what? that hex hexagon, I, I, that was a mistake. I knew that was you that, that come up with that idea. Ah, all right. <laughs> I, I, I knew that was you. I thought I was replying to you, or I just didn't double check it is all. Oh. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. Okay, so now let me, actually, I didn't even share my screen to show you what was going on. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. So let me, let me straighten out things. So now I can live, I can, to, I can live stream and educate people on how to live stream through a Zoom call. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah. You're using, what's that? StreamYard, oh, okay. So basically right now, uh, this is StreamYard and I'm streaming to my Facebook page. <laughs> Okay, so let's go. Let's yeah. go to my Facebook page real quick. Well, you may say that your computer is not that powerful, but do you have a lot of, uh, of RAM? Because mine yeah, would not you know, be, it could able be to better. It. it could be better. See, now look, this is live now. This is us, and this is time delay. This is 10, it's more than 10 second delay. Anyways, if I put that on, you know, I'm not. See, now look, this is live now. This is us, and this is time delay. This is 10 second See, it's time delayed. Okay, so now I can see here. Is anyone looking at my video? No, I don't really care. So I don't really care about that. All I want to do is show you this part. Now watch how this works. So you guys, I don't know if I can double stream you because you guys are already in a Zoom call. But if I go like this and invite, okay, and I copy this, okay, this is the link that allows people to join the stream. CSS here can't post comments to Facebook profile, learn more. So now what that means is I've, I'm streaming to Facebook and I want someone to join the stream. I actually have to myself go to the Facebook feed, find it, and then post it in the comments below the feed. Okay, like this. But see, if I had a team of people, they could do that for me and I wouldn't be occupied with worrying about those kinds of details. because. What happens is like when I launch this, I'm running three streams concurrently. One's going to Facebook, one's going to YouTube, one's going to Twitter. I'm trying to talk to the people. I'm trying to order. It's like all these different kinds of things. The more we can get the community involved and educated on all the different things that can be done in concert, the more uh, we'll be able to leverage the time factor. Because the thing with the bees and stuff, what the bees don't realize is if somebody, I don't know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. If, if somebody were to release something and, uh, and share it and the bees want to push up the, uh, what do you call it, the link juice in that sharing, okay, there's a lot of nuance is how, how you want to go about it. And one of the things you don't want to do, in my opinion, which the ENF is doing now, is they're sharing a link to a YouTube video. They should be sharing a link to their page 
which has a YouTube video embedded in it. Because now all mm. the traffic is landing on their domain and not YouTube. So they're giving away their traffic. You get what I'm saying? And so, yeah. <clears throat> and so the other thing is, is anytime that something goes live, like today, okay, when I saw that news was coming yeah, out and click I on YouTube item, if I click on that YouTube link and I go to their webpage, I'm going to be like, that's annoying. Not that you click on their, you, you click, let me just show you what I mean by that. I need to pick. Uh, he means Embre. Not, not necessarily you have to go to their web page for them going to, to YouTube, but going to their web, web page and having the live stream right there. Yes, Embedded thank on, you. On the web page. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, because now all that interactivity and traffic with the live thing is happening through your domain and not a third party host domain. That's why I keep telling people exactly. they don't get it. They want to use Twitter. <laughs> they want to use Discord. They want to use YouTube. They want to use all these things. Why? Because the traffic's already there and they want some of it. Well, why don't you just go to fucking Ethereum and Bitcoin then? You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like um, my whole thing is, is that there's a way to move the link juice off of those third party things to your domains. And see what the, what they've already done is they used to have this domain. See, look at this. Look what they did. They just did this today. Watch this. Ready? See? See what they did? So they had all these pages that had link juice, and they just probably threw it all away. So what I mean by that is like this domain name, EOS and Foundation. Okay, say you have like this, see this link? Perfect example. This link was a link I went to before. If I, what are the chances when I hit enter, it says error 404. What are the chances it actually goes to the coalition report May 25th? Place your bets, what do you think? It's 100%. Uh, <laughs> I don't you ready? know. You ready? I bet you it goes to 404 error, or I bet you it goes to like some other page other than that article. If that actually goes to a web page that's related to this. That means they're working with a good marketing and SEO company. If it doesn't, they're working with schlops. Or, or not funded at all. Okay, there you go. Okay, there you go. So, but you know what it is? I don't think it's that impressive. You know why? I'm not sure. You know what it looks like to me? That they changed domain names. And that's probably a smart move, actually, now that I look at it, because look at the old name. What was it? Uh, see, what I'm saying is this. Yeah. This, this name, uh, EOSN, was that it? I, uh, I got it wrong. Let me just back up for one. Well, I can't even find it now because it's a forwarder. But what I'm saying is, is that anytime you do that kind of shit, you risk changing the SEO. But... I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think all they did is they didn't change uh, the URL structure or the page content structure. They just changed the front end interface and made a new design. At the same time, they probably applied a new domain name to it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Mm. But my point is, is this, is that that small change from EOSN.foundation to EOS network you know, it might be a negligible change. It might hurt, it might benefit, but you don't really know till you do it. And you gotta pay close attention to see what happens. The thing I'm thinking is what you really need is ENF in the name. Neither of those are very helpful. EOS is a little helpful. You get what I'm saying? Because the, this primary site is what we're going to is the EOS Network Foundation website. Follow me? So if Mm -hmm. If the web name was eosnetworkfoundation.com and someone types in Google EOS Network Foundation, the likelihood and chance of finding the website is easier because your name matches the domain name, right? But in this case, most people, I think, when they search are searching for ENF because it's shorter to type out. So in that sense, if, there's, if they are searching for ENF, the domain name provides no real value. And, and, and at least it contributing to that. 
Do you know what I'm saying? No, but I, I think it's the other way around. I think they're aiming for people to go to the to, to their webpage when they're looking for the for the EOS network uh, for like sort of a very good official page. So, exactly. So what I'm so you're exactly right. So it is more likely someone will write EOS network than someone exactly. will write EOS foundation. Maybe, maybe, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I don't really, you don't really know the answers because in the real world, you're dealing with real things and real targets and daily changing information. Like I look one day to the next and my search engine rankings have changed. You know what I'm saying? Because there's competing, there's competition and things going on. So the thing that I find interesting with this is that, uh, that's one of the things I haven't done is I want I want to do stuff like this. Let me show you because I haven't I haven't done all that. I haven't like put it through a full audit of what I would normally do. But normally when I'm like checking out a site, so we get the EOS network address. Okay, then we paste it in here. A simple little thing called web page test. Okay, now this will give you an idea of how this site's performing just from a. Uh, uh, a um, from a security standpoint, from a uh, not so much security, part security, not not the SSL side of it. Um, from a performance, like how long does it take to load, the waterfall, all that kind of stuff, and from like does it have CDN? Are the images compressed? Like because speed loading time is a big thing now. Um, the faster it loads, the better results you're going to get in search engines. And people that have to wait too long don't want to wait that long and tend to bounce. But none of the said sites in our ecosystem seem to load like super slow. But anyways, this is a very fast render. Okay, so that's good. See, a, a page that loads this quick is very speedy. That's very good for SEO. What I also want to know is this. This is where usually people fail. Ah, okay. See, this is good. This is good. The score that's a D, it's quite common for people to have a low security score there. And that's just the nature of web because there's always newer exploits that aren't always addressed. It's hard to get a site with all A's, quite honestly. <clears throat> My sites don't even match this. But see, this is a good sign because they're, ba they're basically taking advantage of all the things to leverage the loading speed of the time and the efficiency and the performance of the site. So that's the good news. This, you can actually go and see what kind of exploits there are. Ah, why does that happen? That's weird. I should be able to look at this site in particular. Interesting. I've never seen that happen before. So anyways, I'm having fun. I'm building a lot of stuff in YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of content I need to start editing with those because I have like th essentially like three eight hour long sections of streams. But um, the good news is, is that I was able to run a stream pretty much continuously for 24 hours with two hours of plan or two days of planning and uh, very little, uh, very little hiccups, but a few that came up that can be easily avoided that now I know what not to do. Like, for example, StreamYard is supposed to be used with Chrome. You can do the uh, green screen backdrop with Chrome. But when I tried to run Screenyard in Chrome, it wouldn't run, and it crashed, and it hung. So oh, I had to switch to Firefox. See, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but see how you have you have the uh, the file icon right there. The what? The icon. Look at it. Do I? Wait, what? What am I looking at? Uh, look at the icon on top. Oh, this one. Yeah. Or up here? Yeah. That one. Yeah, you changed it. Did you just change that? Because it had a notion. When no, I before. didn't. It was there. It has been there all along. Oh, okay. Well, I was looking at something else. What am I? Wait, hold on. Let me, let me, I can't even remember now what I was looking at. See, mine doesn't even show them. See, I have to look at your thing. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Why do they have a display on one cell phone and not another and not on the web? Good question. <laughs> it's, it's just the, uh, it's the, you know, what, platform you're using and what thing. All right, so let me see this. The Notion page, yeah, it should show up on Notion because you do have it there. And Tilda doesn't have it though. My Tilda page. Uh, let's 
see, I just have that. I need to change it. I haven't changed it. So let's do that right now. Since, since I'm doing stuff. So anyways, this is like an interesting way where we can do a Zoom call where I could have my team observe how to run a live stream and be part of a team where you don't have to be with me physically. Because see, the difference between StreamYard than Zoom is I can't switch the controls around. You get what I'm saying? But like with Zoom, uh, at least you might not be able to control the screen, but you can see what I'm doing. But you can do things like TeamViewer where someone could remotely run the stream. You know, like say, say Oscar, I'm all like, dude, I got to run to the store and back, or I got to go for a medical appointment. Can you run the live stream for me for an hour? You know what I'm saying? You're completely somewhere else with it. Yeah, I have to get it to a desktop and a fast enough connection. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that you can do stuff like that if you had fast enough. Uh, yeah, but how about co-hosting? Can you just do it with co-hosting? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can because, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Co Actually, what I found out is I got dumped from the stream uh, somehow, and my the stream kept running. And yeah, we were there. Yeah, I didn't realize that StreamYard would do that. That's very cool. So yeah, that works too. That actually is a better way because then you're not having to do all the extra bandwidth. But I was just saying, it's a novel way to have a Zoom call to where if you wanted to have like, a, I don't know, like a training session type deal, you know? Yeah. Because the, the StreamYard interface is, I haven't even seen the back end of this. Like when you hit an invite link, I haven't bothered even taking a look at that. I mean, I sent the invite link out, but I haven't tried joining from an invite link. Oh uh, yeah, you get you get a screen asking you for for the name you want to to, to be shown, and that's it. You just basically type in the, the name you want to join in with, and then join. That's it. Now I don't know if this badge thing is. Uh, see, I need to change some images here. You guys got any images for me? Should I just generate some? Just generate them because you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna instead of having a mountain i've got a whole bunch of fractal oh yeah for good audio yeah, images cool. uh different kinds of assets oh yeah i it's they're, they're in linux so i can't get to premiere i'll just download some more to show you but pixabay is a great uh -huh. website to use for just audio, like music royalty free commercial non-commercial doesn't matter and uh, what i did is i downloaded all the fractal uh, image things just for backdrops. That was what I was using for the live stream. So a lot of those, uh, a lot of the images I got for the backgrounds of my live streams came from here. Just because, you know, we're fractally, I thought I'd just get lots of fractals. So like maybe just pick one and I'll throw it up for now. You like this one? I that one looks good. This one? Uh, the one on top. Which one? Which one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Scroll up. Scroll up a little bit. Uh, let's go see. There, yeah. dude. Where's the chat? Mm. Dude, every single one of those look amazing. Yeah, they look good. Ah, oh, but see, but see what good I'm saying is like <laughs> this is this is my renegade, like uh, you know, down and dirty way of getting stuff without having to ask permission or wait on anyone or whatever. But really, what I ideally like to do is use art and content for people within the community to help promote them and find a way to create a reward system or promotion. Or even if I'm gonna use stuff like this, I want to attribute to the uh, the person who made it, you know what I'm saying? And give them some airtime. And you know, just like that whole, right here, see? Image by Alto too. Definitely. So you know what I'm saying? Like what I want this all automated and scraped. So basically like, I wanna have a way to where any kind of website I interact with, I can have an AI thing to talk to it or automate it to where, you know, maybe it's not even API. Maybe it's just like, fake user like bot type deal you know what i'm saying but like so for example in a situation like this if i were to use that image okay and i click on and i click on this and here's my guy actually you go there's a thing where i think it's right here no but there's usually a little thing where it tells you about the author and about the uh thank you oh my gosh and so then the other thing is, is when you come back here let me get you to WordPress because I don't know about Tilda. I don't think it's going to have it. But when you deal with metadata in WordPress, you have all this stuff to where uh, you really want to take advantage of all these fields. But so like, 
for example, I need to redo these. See, see these? This was guerrilla style. I just quickly just said, okay, open stage. I grabbed the mic from Pixabay. I use Windows Photo 3D uh, software to make that this little thing. I never used the software before until I made this, this, these images. And see like this, this I did not do. You really want to fill these blanks out because it's adding more like, uh, uh, like something like this, like grab the mic for EOS open stage, you know, and then title EOS open Holy stage. Cool. Awesome. You know, uh, the, 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 um, the safe place where, where you, hold on, I'm not going to capitalize. The safe place where you can ask EOS questions, get, get, EOS answers and collaborate and share your EOS ideas and, and visions. So, so basically you see what I did there as I kept repeating EOS, I vote questions, answers, collaborate, share ideas, visions. That's the kind of target kind of keyword genre I'm going with EOS open stage. And then I could say something like EOS open stage is the is the synthetic um, collaboration. No, not synthetic, organic, organic. No, I don't think anyone is gonna look for synthetic. Yeah, organic synthesis. I like Synthetic. Amy, so far, yeah. I, right. I like the word. I like the word synthetic co uh, coordination uh, machine or something. Yeah. Well, you need to come up with a copy and help me type it because I would rather just have this all done and not have to worry about all these details and get more people thinking with their minds about, you know, because it's not only just what works, but it's also giving a chance for people to have inclusion in the process of what we're creating. You know what I'm saying? The narrative and the marketing and all that. And so I need to like. I need to basically take all my skill sets and give them away to everybody so we can just drive an army of workers that are optimally, you know, strategizing and like, like playing it as a game. Like, how can you do it better and share it with the group? You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to learn that. I'd love to get assimilated into a, a workflow yeah. that, that basically uh, like created the starting point for me personally in my life to always uh, like line up that way it just there's best practices that come out of that you know what i'm saying right i hope that saved i didn't see us yeah so basically a lot of this stuff is repetitive because like for example i have this image i have this image you see it's cropped it's a different aspect ratio and then then i have this one it's also cropped they go in different places but see i have i have to deal with these images over and over i only did one of them so 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 uh, Mark, when you were saying, like, when I was talking about building a web infrastructure and you were saying, polish it, do it right, do it well, oh, it shouldn't take you that long, you know, like a day. I'm like, no, dude, you have no idea what goes in on these works. Like, just the detail of attention you want to put in to all this stuff is high. But see, the thing is, is in my first iteration, it's more important me, for me to knock out the URL than it is to wor worry about all this get it off, your, Get it off your plate, Trump's be perfect. Right, in, right. In see, because I, because I know it needs to be done, and I can just task an army of students to follow up and, and fix it. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. These well, are all learning I'd, opportunities. I'd like to be able to be perfect and getting it off my plate, unfinished, but good enough. Yeah, and that's dude. This is what I've been doing. Like, look at this, dude. What day is today? Uh, second. Okay, look at this. There's one, two, three, four, five, five posts from the second six seven two posts from the 30th and then i don't have any posts since the ninth most of these are drafts like they're like they're like works in progress but see the second i heard about the inept announcement i got i got a notification in youtube i immediately published it to the web right away even though i'm not ready to release the site why i don't care if people look at it i'm all concerned about what the bots see 
okay? I want to stimulate the search engines. And so I only need a few clicks, but see, just doing this right here and, and this, this link, and somebody clicks through like this to go to this page, okay? This was the live stream, you know, the thing that happened. When I first saw it, there was 40 something views. You follow me? So, so many, oh, 300. So what's happened is in the short time since I saw this come up this morning, there's been close to 300 more views. I knew that was gonna happen. I absolutely knew it. Either, now I only made it contributed one or two clicks to that process, but if every time Doug Wu's link appears and then all these traffic goes to this channel, but Doug's site was pointing to it first, yet nobody was using Doug's site because it wasn't high in search engines, Google might start favoring me more because mine is coming out before everyone else's because it sees that as more, you know what I'm saying? It, it's Because it's, there's a difference between authoritativeness, like, uh, how do I say this? Like um, informationally and then time. So for example, some, some sites have really good authoritative domain ownership over uh, like, so for example, if New York Times or if CNN or some big website like points to your site and posts the link to your site, you get all sorts of uh, bumped up traffic say, okay? But you might have a smaller site and it doesn't have as much authority as New York Times or CNN, but what it's really good about doing is keeping up real time. You know, like it's fast. And so I realized that like the, the frequency of which you publish in relation to when the news first comes out sort of forces the bots to pay more attention to your website. You follow me how that works? Well, yeah. And so that's that stuff that I don't know, but still all holds. I don't know what's still like a lot of the things I learned, you know, there's scary stuff now. Like I don't understand some of these things if I can reproduce it. But like it used to be, so like if I search for something like Woods Walker Wu, okay, check this out. This is scary to me. This, I did this yesterday. See how many results there are? A lot more. Well, only three of them. No, 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 no. I'm just saying total results. Oh, geez. So there used to be a day not that long ago, no matter what words you search for, it always be in over millions of results. Every single thing, even if you search for a word that doesn't exist and the very first result did not even have that word, it would still give you a million results. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. And now it's truncating that list, it's shorting it and it's dropping a lot. And so I have these situations where I search for words and it gives me a list, but then the words I want are not even in the first result, which is bonkers to me. It makes no sense. What is this? <laughs> I, I was curious and, uh, and I did the same. I Googled myself and I, I found stuff that I don't even know where it came from. Jeez. But what I'm saying is like, it's sort of scary because there's probably, I have probably more pages out there with this domain name, with that name, then there are even like in the thing. And so it's sort of weird. Like I, I sent some stuff to Jesse that I was catching because it doesn't always, because like, for example, just for a simple example, EOS forums, okay, that's, this is my website, okay? So Wits Walker Woo is the handle that I use on it. So that, the fact that it puts a link there doesn't surprise me. And the fact that it doesn't put another link to EOS forms doesn't surprise me. But what sort of does surprise me is that there used to be like, uh, like for example, see all these things? New, uh, uh, oh no, I guess I am in there. I am in there. But see, it, this is sort of weird. Like, like what is this stuff? Get EA, I, PQ, Easton C, I get it, but I mean, even that, what is this oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. main community? I guess I subscribe to that. So what I'm saying is that like all these kinds of things are domains that are new to me that I have to get a sense for how they perform in the larger ecosystem. Because right now I'm at a point, 
of having an information deficit. You get what I'm saying? Like I'm not familiar enough with these domains to know any if this is good or bad or what does it mean. So like you remember, for example, Oscar, you were saying Reddit has good EOS presence. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that if you and I also know if you post on Reddit, okay, you're probably gonna get good uh search engine rankings. So what did I do the other day? Let's see if it worked. See, I could have published it, but I think it got deleted or it either got deleted or I didn't have enough karma. I don't remember what happened, but right. I tried to publish it. Yeah, and I'm going to drop that off of this it. laptop and, and get back on this call here shortly, uh, like in about 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, right. uh, I, gave it to you. I gave it to you, Doug. Okay. Hey, I hope it doesn't fuck things up. If so, then we'll all just rejoin. I will figure it out. But anyways, dude, uh, look, at, look at this. You want to hear? You want to, <laughs> dude? <laughs> Jay is Jay doesn't know what to do with me. I love it. It's funny. He does. He's me and Jay are having a great time. Okay. <laughs> Look at this one. Four year university. Mm. I'm trying to po post this on Reddit, but like I'm telling you, I don't know what happened that it didn't it didn't get published. Oh, the Reddit one? Yeah. Well, I don't know either. I try to put I try to post this very same link, the one you're you're looking at right now. I try to post it on Reddit, but I don't know. I don't Dude, know why I, it didn't. Listen, I'm blocked. I can't post StreamYard links in Twitter. I cannot invite people through Twitter. Why not? Here, I'll show you. I don't know. I also, I also could not tweet during that stream. Like all, basically, I tell you, I feel as though it's nefarious meddling, but I can't prove it. But I can all make me host through. again. What's that? Make me host. Oh, I, okay. I guess. How do I do that? My mouse is not happy. I can't. Oh, it says reclaim host. I think I got it. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh wow. Okay, it just started recording again. I hope that recording works because I switched laptops. We'll see. No, uh, it, it's been recording all along. It hasn't stopped. Yeah, but it downloaded a 1.7 megabyte file when I <laughs> when I switched over. So I'm like, did it stop? Well, because you were locally recording, oh. you had to. Right? Oh, that was no. Maybe that was the local recording. I, I think that may have. I'm not sure, man. Good question. I, I, I forgot. Think you said you were yeah, yeah, the locals, what you said. Because the, the one that is uploading to the cloud is still on. It hasn't, it hasn't stopped. Okay. Uh, yeah, because about three minutes ago is when I got this 1.7 megabyte file, which is pretty coincidence. Uh, maybe I got it from it resolving that video file for about, say, five to ten minutes, however long we've been talking. But. I need you guys to authorize another channel for me if possible. Yeah, I love how you have two of those websites on that one. What? Well, what, what, what? 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 Yeah, what, 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 what were you saying? You know how you have five of those emoticons that we created a new word for today and said that's those in, in the chat? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, those five okay. links, two of them are of just basically an ETF site. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why those pull through on some on some displays and some uh, platforms and not others. It's sort of funky. Like, cause even like this, see, like this thing. Oh, hold on. Let me get to the other. Let me get to this. Or actually, that's not what I want. I need to go. Cause see, that's that's the editing. This is the, where you edit it. I need to actually go to this. Uh, whoops. Ah. So like, for example, this is the site and see, it still has a T from the tilde because I'm on tilde. So you think it would pull the T through, you know what I'm saying? That fave icon, but it doesn't. So what I'm thinking is that it's actually being, it's like being pulled from a different location. So uh, how can I explain that? Let me give you an example. So like here, 
So let this one's published. So what is this one? Oh no, that's the one we just did. Let me give it another one. That's still the ETF. That I don't need. That's still the ETF. I don't need that. I don't want that. I got the same thing open a million times. Okay, like these ones. So let's look at this one. This is EOS matchmakers. See what happens here. See, look, I don't get any, I don't get any, I don't get any, what do you call them? Who had the phone? Was it you, uh, Oscar, that had the uh, images and marked in? Yeah, I can see them. I'm seeing it in the chat. Can you, are you on your phone right now? Yeah. Let me go there. Yeah, tell me if you see any emoticons there or fave icons or whatever. Because, like, for example, this Hold one, on. you should I mean, see. I can see if I, I can see if I have icons, but I can't see any emoticon. No, I mean, can you screenshot that and, and put it in? But you then, see right no. now, like, you, you don't have to, but you see, that, you see where my fave icon is? I have a thing there and I have a thing here. And sometimes what happens is that, like, there's 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 a there's metadata or there's images that are pulled into displays that aren't the fave icon but it's like the featured image and so uh no but i don't see that anyways oh yeah the pixabay thing just so you know oh can i can i do some actually you know what let me turn off the streams let me turn off this. I don't need to be broadcasting us. But anyways, uh, end broadcast. So the other things I found out about this software is it has a cloud uh, depository that I can um, save recordings in or my past recordings are saved there. So like, all these are my past recordings. I have 50 hours of time, I already used half. <laughs> so like this one, I just, I just, I streamed. I can view it on YouTube right now, but it's also saved in the cloud here. So I can download and record it directly from here. But if I click on this, it goes straight to the video. And so this video I made just for you leave today. And it's just part of me documenting. It is a LG. Because basically I'm gonna use this phone for training purposes. And so when I set it up, I'm gonna make videos of all of how I all the different things that need configuration on it and, and cut it up into short little you know, tutorials. Because I'm pretty certain there's a remote access program that you can make to display your phone on your desktop and then I can just record it on the desktop. All right, what I do you got? I use a phone for most, of, for most things. So, okay, like I'm telling you, I have a computer, but the computer has only two, two gigabytes of RAM and it's very, very slow. So it, it stresses me only to think that I have to grab the, the, the laptop. So for most of the things I do, I do them, I do them on the phone. And that's a fabric gun. Well, you know, that's good to know because I think we need to know what our limitations are, you know, with, uh, with um, like, like for, for example, some things work on the, on, on the phone, but not on web, like Twitter spaces. You want to talk on Twitter spaces, yeah. you need a phone. But then some things work on desktop and not on the phone. You know, and so, so, so like if someone calls into a Zoom call through a phone number, they can't display their face. That might not be an issue in some cases. It may be an issue. I don't know, you know, but it's good to know that like just people have an understanding of how the technology works. What are the constraints and limitations? What's the easiest, best, simplest way to use it to get the most value kind of stuff, you know, and let, let them like basically, cause I don't want to teach everyone everything. But the second someone has a question, if there's all if there's not already a tutorial explaining it, you just make a new tutorial. And so, so basically all the information is there, but it's more like stuff that, that they're looking for and not stuff that you overwhelm them with. So anyway, yeah, I get that. And it, like I'm telling you, since I have to use a phone for most of the things, every time something comes to the need for using the desktop comes or or I'm shown to something that does not work on mobile, I, I get that <laughs> feeling. So I'm like, uh, so this should be what do you ever, more accessible. 
Right. What do you ever think happened with the whole uh, Bywire thing? That was sort of funny. I guess the coder forgot to take his password. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just still not working on my phone. I don't know what happened there. But he says, I- I'm thinking that perhaps maybe uh, they did fix the bug, but they forgot to update the, the, the app they have on Play Store. I don't know. Because I'm telling you, the, other, the only thing that, that, is, that I have not done is resetting my phone my phone for for the fabric uh, settings and i'm not gonna do that it's the only thing right. i haven't done right. that's a little bit extreme just to troubleshoot when you find it, it still doesn't work you know especially if it sort of pisses you off if it still doesn't work and you go all that trouble but i didn't do that but for the rest i did everything i could and it, it, it just to this moment it's still not working it wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me log in, and it, the, the the data of these of these guy would still show up. Yeah, that's sort of uh, interesting. Okay, so this channel right here, I need help with. I want to get this one going. I want to use these for Kivon. I want to use these for people who just want to showcase their skills with anything or just play around, just people in our community. And so Kivon, I don't know if you know him. He and I have been talking. And uh, he, and I want to start. Uh, I want to do an interview with him and just talk about music. It has nothing to do with EOS, but just an outlet for us as a community being able to just play, you know, whatever creative way we want. And so uh, the problem with this channel is I can't validate it, so I'm less. I'm stuck to 15 minutes of video, but if I verify it, then I'll be freed from it. And the way you verify is you. Uh, use a phone number and um, whoops, shoot. I've already used up all my numbers allotted. You go two per year per phone number to verify. So um, let me see, I get this right yeah, now here, EOS Open Stage Playground. Then I got a channel. Okay, there's a channel and then I go to channel. And then I go to settings or customize channel, excuse me. And then basic info, branding, where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere in here. I swear it was. Ah, I already forgot. I swear it was in here. All right, but basically I need to stick in the phone number somewhere. Oh, settings. Thank you. You have a you have a circle. I forgot. Feature eligibility. Here you go. See this? You'll videos over fifteen minutes, custom thumbnails, live streaming, and content ID uh, claim appealing content ID claims. Does anyone care to help me with this? Uh. I have a phone number that you can use in there. I only have one and I'm already used using. But I've never really used my 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 channel, my YouTube channel. Well, yeah, when did you make your YouTube channel? Oh years ago. <laughs> so basically you can do two per year per phone number. So if you don't use them up, you should give give them All away. Right. Then, and then put put the uh, the country, put Venezuela. Oh, oh Mexico, that's right. Okay. This is funny because I wonder if this is gonna like mess up my my language translation. Go all the way down. No, go all the way down. Huh? All the way down. Move for a V. Oh, I thought you said v, v, Venezuela. Oh, I thought you said Mexico for some reason. I don't know why. I was like, all right, so uh, I don't even know where you are. Zero four one four. A four one five four. Two five five. Okay, let's see what happens. I've never done this before with the internet. So it'll, oh, it looks like it worked. Let's see. Of course. Go for the message. What, what is it? Uh, zero 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 six two nine. Thank you for your contribution. You should get respect for this, even if it's <laughs> a small amount. <laughs> it's helpful though, right? Yeah. Because the last thing I want to do is use a channel that I can't broadcast to live or that stops at 15 minutes and I have a live thing or a real thing that I, you know, or something I want to upload and I can't fit it. 
And then you realize, oh, I don't have any free numbers. See, this gets that whole concern out of the way. Sweet. Okay, so now, okay, let's check this out. I close StreamYard. Can I now broadcast to this channel? Let's find out. So let's close. Let's come back over here, create a new broadcast. And now I'm gonna hit uh, add new destination, YouTube channel. See, now look, I was smart. I separated all the EOS channels from my personal email, just so in case the future past was so that I would relinquish control over all these YouTube channels. I don't have to worry about them being intermixed with my personal business and stuff. Uh, you got my attention on that one. Uh, 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 so I just did that with the translation foundation email address. What was the key there? Well, what I'm saying is, is that I, I already had a YouTube channel. Okay. Let me go back here. I already had a YouTube channel based on my Gmail address. YouTube channels are based on Gmail addresses, right? So here's my, my personal Gmail address, which is related to my business. Yeah. This one is related to all things EOS, knowing that I want a delineation between my personal business and EOS, because okay. the second those videos start getting attention and views and comments, you cannot migrate them across accounts or across channels and shit like that. It's stuck there. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, so, so like, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable giving the password away to my Gmail address, but to EOS open stage, I might in the future, if it makes sense, like if we, if someone else is reliable enough or trustworthy enough to deal with it or the infrastructure, or we're rolled into a formal business or, you know, with a more de defined process and, whatever. The last thing I wanted to do was tie it to my own personal email address, right? And so I'm yet to do that with the, with the Notion side. I was I was planning to move all the Notion to the to the to the ES, to the ES Translation Foundation the, the email, Gmail. So it doesn't say Oscar's Notion, but right, ES Translation right. Foundation Notion. Okay, so so this one, so this one, see, here's a new thing now. EOS open stage the acronym technically is e-o-s-o-s -O -S. okay see now on all these other ones i didn't write i just wrote eos open stage and eos journeys i didn't write open stage because i don't want to make all these like open stage but the idea behind the open stage is the open stage is where we want to make things public and we want to get that out right and so this playground is just a channel for anyone who is part of the EOS community that wants to be able to use this channel to help bolster their whatever they're doing to the rest of the community. And so part of what I wanted to do with this channel is create a space where people can just freely talk without judgment over their creative ideas or their musician or just to get to know each other, you know, share videos and upload it through that channel. Just, you know, so the, one of the first things I was going to do is put um, do, I wanted to do, um, cause my, so, so you have the YouTube channel. Let me finish this first before I get into talking too much. Let's just get this going and see if this works first. Okay. See, this always happens. See, look. So I requested access here. So it's, it's not gonna let me for an, uh, uh, 24 hours. Why? So that you don't have bots streaming <laughs> as my guess, or just, or just nefarious actors that wanna sort of live stream at any minute. They actually have to play it ahead 24 hours, I guess. Yeah, you gotta remember to do 24 hours before. So, so what I'm saying is that like, if you're ever thinking about streaming on a YouTube channel, it's not a simple matter of, oh, let's just build it real quick and, and, and have it doing doing it later that day although it does take like maybe you know not even that long to set up there's these oh. sort of, you know steps you have to do that take a little bit of time so that's why uh, i like to get these out of the way early boys i had to tell you i forgot i, I forgot I, this is a a, a a 180 degrees change of the topic but I don't uh, you can continue the, the conversation later 
Uh, I was suffering. I, I don't know if you know Matthias from the Z Zio's. Uh, uh, I heard the name. Project. Matthias Schoenbucker or something like that. Yeah, uh, I offered. I offered the guy that is making the building website. I offered the, the translation services, and he said that he would be he he would be interested in in doing that in the future. Not not right now because he's not done with the website yet. But gotcha, when gotcha, he gotcha. is, he said that he's gonna uh, be coming around. See All what right. we can do. So so let's talk about that deal with June, whoever that was, that late night quick turnaround thing that we tagged team on. Who's um, that? You want you know, the one that was in Spanish that we needed to move to Spanish from English to Spanish? Oh, yeah. Spanish. Uh, they were, they, I don't know if you paid attention to what the video was about, about but it I didn't was have a time. Senate. It was Bitcoin. It was a Senate. Huh? Yeah, but it was a Senate uh, um, proposing to have Bitcoin as a legal tender in Mexico. Ah, oh, nice. Nice. See, I didn't watch it to, I mean, I, I don't, yeah. And they cool. they're That's taking the out. proposal all, all the way up. It's in, it's interesting, but I I checked on the on the guy to see what groups we have in common, and none of the other ES ES groups in Spanish. He's not in any of them. So that's what I was about to say. I don't even think that person is part of our community or ecosystem. I just see some. No, he is. Oh, is he? he okay. Is. I was like, what? I was wondering, just like I didn't know, if sure or not. I was like, that's what I was asking. Like, I don't really care. I was just wondering. He is because he, he's in a lot of in a lot of ES groups, but he's not in in any of them in in any of the ones in Spanish. There are there are there are. There are. So let me, let me check so again. The, the thing I wanted. Yeah. To is when, he's, when on, I kind of, he's even on Pomelo and in ESIO developers. Oh, okay, cool. See, the thing I wanted to know is when he came in, it was like late at night and I happened to be up. So I started conversing with him. And when he demonstrated to me the need for a quick turnaround time, I was like, I'm not even going to wait for anybody else to get involved here. I'm just going to take this on myself as far as I can because I was worried I was worried. I haven't used that API thing with anyone before that, you know, I've only used it for my own sites and I was worried that I might run into a hiccup with it. And I didn't know what kind of turnaround time our team could provide for this person. So I just wanted to get on the ball because if some alternative options or more people want to come along to help out, at least I got the ball rolling, you know, enough to keep him like to have in case nothing happened, I, I could actually get it solved on my own without, maybe it's not a perfect translation, you know, and I'm, I told them right up, I'm not proofing the, the base script, like, and I couldn't have in this situation because the base script was in English or Spanish this time, right? We're translating it backwards, essentially. And so there's no way I could have had the time to review that script or have made sure the base translation was good. And so I'm having to rely on the I auto captions in Spanish. And remember, you told me afterwards there were some minor things that, you know, whatever. And so I no, tried no, to no, explain they, that. They were minor. <laughs> They're major. In some cases, they were dire. Yes, yeah. I, I suppose I didn't check the 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 translation, but I assumed the translation was going to be bad because the base transcription, the base uh, script was not was not very good. In, okay. in some points, it, it picked up different words, so it was going to be different. But I didn't check the the result after uh, I checked on the on the base script. Okay, so were you able to make those changes to the video yourself? Did he give you authorization to go in the back end, or how did that work out? No, he he did not. He I, I just passed the what I did was what you could what you could see what what you saw. I passed him the the transcription through the through the group because I downloaded the SR, the SRT through you know one of the many pages there are for grabbing the SRT files from the YouTube videos. I grabbed it, edited it and sent it back to the telegram group but oh, he so did the rest on his own so you just got him to upload the srt there exactly okay so so that's the thing that i wasn't privy to tracking because i had too much going on and i was all like i know these guys can figure it out and handle it from here but i just want to know what happened you know what i'm saying because that final polishing job you did i didn't realize how important it was to make a because like who wants to get a video translated for something important and we got some glaring errors in there it's like we can't rely on youtube's thing so that probably means like all the videos that we have for the etf team on fractally 
that the auto translations that I have that I've used the software, there's probably a plenty of little errors in there in foreign languages that we we haven't even bothered looking at because I, I, you know it's like what I mean. Oh, it's not that we can. It's not that we can either. So, <laughs> uh, in the case of uh, checking the base translation, perhaps perhaps we should do that more often. But for checking the results of the translations, it uh, at least right now I don't feel like we have a way to do that because neither of us speak, I don't know, Chinese. Right. No, no, no. I guess what I'm trying to say is though, uh, what I want to start thinking of is not within the limitations of the labor force and organizing um, capacities of our present team, but I want to think from an unlimited potential of like, what's the best way to organize people? If we had an unlimited number of bodies that had interest in participating, how do we delegate and structure, you know, a workflow in, and how does that workflow change as a, our solutions and technologies change? Because the reality is at some point in time, I would be more than happy to not even be on YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if there was a working alternative, but there isn't, there isn't really a better alternative that I see at this moment. And so I just, I, there's an interesting thing that sort of wondering about, because I'm just looking ahead is maybe I might try changing the settings on the YouTube channel where I can start giving out like moderator access, like lower delegation. Because right now it's like you're either admin or not. And there's a kind of thing where you can do with the branding that changes it. But once you do that change, you can't change back. And I was reading about like why, why you wouldn't want to do that. And so I'm thinking about doing that with our YouTube channel. So what that would mean, Oscar, is what my expectation was, is that can can multiple people get into the back end and deal with the SRTs, for example? You get what I'm saying? Because uh, like that, right that now- That would be good, because it's because something like, like what happened could happen in the future again, because you might be full of, uh, you know, full of work and doing a lot of things at the same time. And how do we get access to, to the back end or what you have how do we do what you do if we don't have access to it right so so there's two ways of simple it's two ways it's either i oh uh, by the way uh is it is it the the channel is a youtube channel on your personal on your personal account or is it because we have the the gmail from the from the etf now so i don't know if we can move some some stuff in there because uh if we have to move one video one uh, the videos one by one that, that makes a lot of that's a lot well, of you don't work really and want to move I, I think it's uncomfortable but you're gonna you don't want what? to move them because you're gonna seo on them you're gonna lose the comments and likes you're gonna lose all the interactivity yeah the exactly so that's why I, that's why i said i didn't want to have to like think a lot about it so i said well at least i'm just going to make a new email address to dedicate it just for everything you want because i didn't want to make like a new email address for each channel you know what i'm saying i just wanted one email address for all just all the eos type stuff just so at least at least I could separate that out, you know what I'm saying? But for example, I didn't separate the ETF channel from like EOS open stage. You get what I'm saying? Like all these ideas, EOS index, EOS open stage, those were business ideas that I had before I met and like got involved with talking to people in the community that I spawned on my own just from watching and observing the EOS community and what needs were a bit that were in demand. I said, these two domains would be great domains to focus on and I'm gonna go build a channel and so, so when I did all that, maybe I should have made another Gmail address and separated that out just for the team on Fractally, you know, and maybe we should move all the videos out onto another channel, but I'm telling you, it's a pain in the ass to do that. And it's very labor intensive, it all the downloads and uploads yeah. and doing all the, dude, all the work I've put into massaging the meta tags and the playlist and all this, you know, assembling, it takes a lot of effort. You know, and so I'm like, I don't want to have anyone have to go do with that again. You know what I'm saying? So, Let alone there is twice. there is no way to just migrate one channel to another account. Not nope, not no, not, not that I know of. And see, that's this is all part of what when we build our blockchain thing, like this is all the kinds of things I'm thinking about. Like, is is there a way that how do we make it ubiquitous? I don't know. I'm not worried about that. But all I'm saying is, is that I'm really having fun getting into the production mode game because I basically have held off on web production and like live streaming and all these things that I know I want to be doing in the future because I've been very much focused on the information gathering, curation, 
harnessing and trying to digest what's going on in this community. Because if I want to be involved in marketing this community or the efforts within this community, if I want to be involved with participating, creating value, I have to have my own developed understanding and you know personal touch, if you will, on how to implement that. And if I don't understand what the content or subject matter is that I'm dealing with, then I'm not going to be able to provide that kind of unique value the way I want to. So basically, what I'm trying to tell you is I, I'm done studying and researching EOS. I feel like I know enough about it. I feel as though with your guys' participation, even when I screw up and get things wrong, like, oh, it's not a five-year anniversary, Doug. It's a four-year anniversary. You know, shit, I put it on Hive five years. Oh, no, it's irrebootable. No, I already learned that you still can change yeah. it. Still, you know what I'm saying? So there's all this stuff to where if I don't have a team, I don't even realize the mistakes I'm making because I'm just like creating this wake of destruction and mess. But with a team, people are, <laughs> can point it out. Hey, Doug, fix that. You didn't. You spelled this wrong. It's just like the email address on Wax's EOS marketing site. Without it, no one else looking at it, all these kinds of little mistakes can happen and not be, you know, even aware of because no one's looking at it. But now that's the next thing. I'm I'm wanting to know what do you guys think about taking over EOS Marketing.io and whether or not that should be a team project or just a Doug Wu project. <laughs> was it was it not something from? I mean. Did you get that, or does it exist and it's already, you know, someone already has it, or okay, because there Chris was a, there was an attempt in the past for someone called ES Mark Marketing, and I don't know what happened to that person, but I think they were trying to do something like that. Okay, can I share screen? Is uh, it, go oh, ahead. Screen? Oh, you already are sharing the screen. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So basically, remember this site, uh, Mark. This is the uh, okay. Who did this? I, uh, Chris Wax at Helios. He's no time for it now. He's basically he, when I met with him and talked to him, he's basically telling me. Last oh, I can time see I talked, it. But see, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I requested it because I was curious how how it would look like. Uh, Mark, this is this is a Wix site right here, by the way. So anyways, that might be outside the scope or interest of our team, but it is something that if I get involved with or not, I would love your guys' feedback and input on what I'm trying to do with it, not just be like, you know, coming up with some thing out of left field. I don't even know exactly what's going on now with the new direction with the, because supposedly Zach Gall said, like there's a new, like he gave me an impression there's a new rebranding coming out this weekend, but maybe that isn't happening and maybe that is happening but now that i see they're releasing the information about the do developers relation or manager or whatever and i see that the eos nation foundation web domain is changing and i see that like there is something going on i'm thinking that they may have a more comprehensive vision that they want to roll out which may mean taking over this site or using this domain name but i don't know for certain And I, and I have the, the thing is that if there is a, a rebrand, is it going to make sense to have EOS marketing anymore? Because if they rebrand, it's not going to be the same name. I have no idea. No idea. So that's a good question to ask. Maybe the main name becomes worthless. Maybe, maybe, maybe they change the name from EOS to Tiger. <laughs> you know, I have no idea. Like, but I'm, <laughs> the I'm like, eye of the tiger. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like, I have no idea what's going to happen, but all I know is I have sitting on two domain names hoping that they're not going to remove EOS or I'm going to be like legacy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like my EOS open stage and EOS index, I'll be have to buy new domains. Tiger index and tiger open stage or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is a Palm no. project. It is. Very interesting. Very interesting at that, actually. But like I'm telling you, there was someone someone who made accounts called Eos Marketing everywhere. He was active on Twitter for a while, later, but I don't know what happened to them after that. Never saw them again. Maybe maybe I am the one who's not been very active Ooh. in the places he has. Hey man, but... hey man, y'all look in in the the uh, Telegram chat real oh, quick. Oh, those are beautiful. Oh, you see? Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, is this one supposed to stop like that? 
ba basically, uh, I just put in the chat a bunch of icons in the private chat. Okay. All right. So now, uh, you know what I was trying to get you to meet for me to do? And I'll show you. See, if you type ETF in the search, this one right here. Mm -hmm. I, I think I did. Hold on. Uh, te there should be temporary. Oh, yeah. Temporary group for ETF assets. What I want is nothing in here but just graphics. So that way, when there's a live stream event or you need like a real quick, I need to make a something and you need a graphic, there's this one Telegram group and all it is is just assets for our team. You follow me? Because we, yeah. we all have Telegram, right? And we often always have it installed. And so the second you go to this group, it'll just cache on your device, right? So I don't want any of this shit. I don't want Patrick in here. I don't want, well, not all of them. <laughs> I, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking uh, earlier today, today or yesterday, I don't remember, that I saw you sending links to every group you, you are in. And I said, he became the, the same thing he swore to destroy. He Wait, became that Patrick. Say? say that again? And that you were... Uh, resending links to to every group you are in and when i saw that i was like he became patrick he's doing exactly oh, the same thing that he I, did, I did not send them to, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. i did not send them to all groups i am in i no, said not all of them i'm just i'm just joking i'm just joking yeah. but you sent it I, to, no, no. to the I said, when i, I saw said, the groups because i'm in, in a bunch of group right and i saw in three of them i saw link and link and link and it's very rare when you send something to, to groups that you see the same message and, uh, a lot in that. I mean, in my case, because I have a lot of, a lot of groups, all right? So I right. saw three messages and I said, look, he's becoming Patrick. But I'm joking, I'm joking. I know you're not. <laughs> I know you're not. See, see, let me tell you why I did that. I specifically sent it to certain groups because what I was trying to do is not get a lot of, the, I don't necessarily need a lot of traffic to it, but I just need like a click here or there. You know what I'm saying? Because like you're in Venezuela, he's in New York City, he's over here. It doesn't have to be a lot of clicks. And even if I don't get any clicks, it doesn't really matter to me. But the thing is, is that the reason why I did it is because it was time dated. I wanted to get a click on the link before the premiere of the thing started. Do you follow me on that? Because and because... Mm. Because there was a premiere of, how do I say this? Because basically in a YouTube premiere, that's a scheduled live event that is upcoming where when you go there, you click set reminder, okay? And you when you get those, you typically can't embed them into a video page. It doesn't embed the same because they don't. YouTube doesn't want you to embed those kinds of pages. They want to force you to go to youtube.com to watch it instead of your own site. And so when I saw that opportunity, to put that link out there because I knew it was like hot off the press. Like I want to be Patrick to the punch. I want to be all the other websites that are going to repeat that link to the punch. Because if I do do that, it's going to increase my SEO. I just need like one or two clicks because if there's no clicks, then there's no registration that event occurred. But there's second, there's one click then I came in before everyone else. So in that time sequencing, that's showing that this guy had that information out there first. You follow me? And because I have no presence mm. really right now, getting out there first, all of a sudden, YouTube's or Google's gonna be like, whoa, what is this over here? Like, this is anomaly. This is not normally happening this way. So it's gonna wanna pay attention to that. You get what I'm saying? And so because I realized there was that window of opportunity, I flooded. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, if I'm gonna do this, I'm not posting. Do you see what I did, Oscar? As I first posted the YouTube link, and then as quick as I could, I went and embedded the YouTube link in a web page and then edited my Telegram message to show my web page. Because what I didn't want to do is pass the traffic straight to YouTube. I wanted to pass it through my web domain. I noticed that too, because I, I, at first I saw the, the first time I saw the link, it was a YouTube link and I clicked on it and I got it. There was no one at the moment. Uh, I saw that I was alone in the chat and uh, I stayed for, and you weren't there either. You were, you were broadcasting this video, which I don't remember what it was about. I, I, I saw it, I saw there was no one and got out. And then I, I went to, to give my quest, had my quest, had met, went, met with the students and everything. Then I left again. 
checked again. It was no longer the YouTube video. It was already <laughs> at your webpage. Yeah. But still, there was no, at the moment, again, there was no one. So I left. And then I got busy, and when I got when I got back, and you know, the rest of the story, is, the rest is history. You already know that. Hey, but but you yeah, know I noticed. You that, get, I noticed. I went to the, to the website first. Yeah, I did. You're paying attention. See, not everyone's going to catch that because they're only going to check it after I do it the second time. You know, they're they're not. Ca- you only had a short window of opportunity to see that before I changed it the second time. Like I first post it and then I change it, I guess the first time. So you're gonna get, a, if you have your notifications on and you get that ding and you look right away, you might see that, but do you have the eye and the memory and the awareness that I changed it? Or did you not notice that it went from a YouTube, you know, to a, cause, cause see, you should notice cause there's a big graphic there for the YouTube page pulls in the graphic for the YouTube. But then when I, when I post my link, it pulls in the page for something else or the graphic for something else. Right, and that auto preview changes immediately. So, if you're paying attention, you can see those differences. But if you're not paying attention, you might not. But that's very astute and observant of you, Oscar. I'm very. And yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm liking. I'm liking it though. I'm liking I mean, it. I'm not. I'm not the talking type. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not talking, but I am around and I'm reading and I'm paying attention. So oh yeah, I noticed that, man. I noticed that. I wish I I could see the uh, example uh, y'all just went through because I missed. Oh, dude, it. you want to hear some funny shit, dude? Let's let's read this together because this is not live, right? Yeah, this is totally recorded, and, and I know, but this is great recorded. If you haven't checked this out, this, uh, so so basically, I I just got back. Okay, I just got back to, uh, it actually goes back more, it goes back more. Okay, I just got back into EOS project, which is the EOS group. Two weeks ago, I realized I couldn't get in to see a comment because I was banned from the group would say, sorry, this is error or something. And when I complained about it, I realized because Dan Singjoy said this message and then I'm like in Discord going, well, how come I can't open the message? Why can't I open the message? And so Dario figures out a block from the group and he says, try now. So now I'm in EOS project. The second I get in EOS project, they're getting mad at me for being off topic or whatever and or at some point. And so I'm like, can is there anywhere where something is not off topic or where this discussion can be, you know, considered on topic? So then they say EOS gov. Well, I've heard of this EOS gov before. Everyone talks about it, but I never found the group before. So I decided, I figured it out which one it was. So I joined it. So now this started this morning at 9 a.m. Okay. And it goes on for a while. And probably what I'll do is just let me just give you a link uh, to in the chat. So you guys all know you bookmark this and follow it in your leisure because it goes on for a while. But basically, I'm starting off. And now there's probably a little bit more. Can, any, can anyone tell me here what the nature of this group is and if I will be cussed at, banned, or criticized for asking questions, trying to have an open and honest dialogue about EOS topics here? Hey, that's and somebody question. threw a rotten tomato at you. <laughs> right. That's, uh, that's my first question. Now, I just want to know. This is my experience. I'm jaded of this experience. I'm trying to preemptively ask a simple question. Is this yeah, question like, off topic? And they're like, fuck off. <laughs> exactly. And so... Then it says, well, it has no strict moderation, but some of the most interesting discussions about EOS happen here. And then I write, I don't understand why after four months of being told I'm off topic in other EOS groups and asking where can this discussion be held where it's on topic that I would finally get an answer. That's amazing. I guess I had to raise hell to get let into the EOS group, which I was blocked from even finding in searches or viewing to be told to come over here by Chris Barnes. So Chris, thank you. Yeah, Phoenix mentioned this EOS gov in the live stream yesterday to me, and I wasn't even sure what he was talking about, but assumed I was in it. Now I feel like I've been missing out this last five months, a lot of EOS, and that's supposed to say shit, but an asterisk. And I want to make an index for, e- in, for I- index for Telegram groups for new people in EOS, but I'm afraid if I make it uh, public, the groups will be flooded with more bots. Okay, so you say something, and so I say something, and then, uh, 
And then he's like, yeah, probably... they're, they're, I, I try to look for him. I try to look for I, I said that it was Wild West because you haven't seen that when, when he gets sure. ugly. When he gets ugly, they talk about. There, there was a, a season, in the previous seasons, they talked about vaccination. And after that, they, talk, they talked about Ukraine. And you have no idea how many things they have talked in there. And he gets, oh, sometimes it gets rough, right? So it's difficult. To well, be basically, there. okay, so uh, basically, also, this is what happens. Is about the, to get to the and I finally oh, yeah. get rid of all their stupid stuff. And now here are my questions. Here are my five questions, right? Bam, right there. And so it takes me a while to finally, look at what this one says, Emma. She says, you are scaring some people with those questions. Now I understand why you were muzzled. <laughs> I was muzzled. I mean, because I was scared. She's, she's the question. one that is, she's the one that is some, uh, most of the time, she's the one that is uh, uh, opposing the, the, the arguments to all the ones in there. She's a moderator. As right. You can no, see, I see that. I too. see that. She's been but, on my side. And then listen what I wrote. Because she's a fighter. She's the one that's fighting when, when, there is something that, to talk about. She's the one who fights. <laughs> right. So anyways, now Phoenix is in here from like, this is 40 minutes ago. Double standard I rules for thee, not me kind of thing. Friends in high places versus friends in lowly places. See, this is the kind of conversation I'm generating in, my, in this dialogue and I'm enjoying it. Like, let's give him a clap. Uh, yeah, you're gonna see more. You're gonna see a lot more. By the way, the index you mentioned, there already is one like that. I tried to look for for a to send it to you, but I didn't find it. I know it is, and it's old, dude. Like last year old, or or even before that. But at Does least he has a lot of groups point? already, so you would have to to update it. But somewhere, it is. You, so wait, you just have to have? look for it. Do we have uh, uh, access to it? Or do we know who's own uh, or manages it or whatever? Hey, what are y'all's email addresses? Where can I find them real quick? I'm punching it into the chat. Hey, dude, uh, how did you turn on closed captioning for this? Uh, I don't know how you turned them off. That's uh, Mark why do, has to why do does it, it I think. say that? Well, you can I see don't... this transcript recording on. Yeah, actually, there's a way to do it where the, our voices talking are actually auto dictated with Zoom. That was happening in another meeting I was at. I was trying to figure that out. But it looks like it's happening in this one, but I can't really show you because. Okay, hold on. No, I mean, I'm looking at it. Oh, you I'm see it? I'm looking at it because, uh, yeah, I had the option in here to activate the closed captions, but I had to request the host to activate them. So I requested it, and I assume that Mark at some point uh, activated them, and I don't see the option anymore to deactivate them. So I suppose that he's the one who has to do it. And I suppose at the end of this recording, we should have a transcript of our narrative, which is directly related to what Essie, part partly related to what Jesse's trying to accomplish, and partly related to, to how we could facilitate facilitate this whole thing of dialogue and transcription and translation because you know it's one thing for us to do a zoom and have a transcript right when the zoom meeting's done than for us to have a zoom meeting that we have to upload to YouTube save a lot of time hours yeah. and download back and blah 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 i mean i was thinking on that when i when i activated them but i mean i didn't go as far as, as you <laughs> Uh, what was the email again? What was the email again for? This thing I'm using called Canva that wanted me, to add, Canva. My, wanted me to add my team members' email addresses because <laughs> uh, I just uh, set up a, an account with them. Uh, and you'll see I, in the Telegram chat, I just published what I'm doing with Canva, which is just making a bunch of icons. Yeah, I like the first one. Yeah, they're all good. I just did you see the last one I just put in? Yeah, I like the second two of the last one. The one they're all they're all just the hexagons like that. And then there, there's one with three of them on that one that I that I does it look confusing? Should I break all those out? Are you catching well, this, know. Oscar? I mean I am I am looking at the of the 
Look, Aaron's writing right now. So, so Phoenix just sent me this. So, you know, he says, notice how everyone got real quiet when I mentioned the whole hack tape. This is exactly what I was talking about. And they did, they skirted around it. No one answered it directly until Phoenix came in. And so now everyone's all like, got quiet. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought you knew about this. That, that yeah, but I, I, want more, I do know, but I don't know the details. I want more information. I want to search on it. I want a web link and no one, you know, it's like. It's on the links. It's on the links I sent you. There is one that, that literally explains the, the, the parts of the contracts where the where the exploit happened. So you just have to click on the links I sent. Will you send it to me? Yeah, I did on the group. Okay. Uh, I sent you three which, links. I didn't even see that yet. Where's one? Uh, this one? Um, show yeah, right me. Here. Here is, here is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know this one. But see, uh, no. This is about the stealing funds back deal. See, there's a difference between the hack and the funds coming back. No, 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 no. Right? The third link, the third link is about the hack. Right. But that's what I'm saying. This is different. That's about how they recovered the funds from the hack. No, right? no. The third one is about the hack, about the exploit. The explanation of the exploit. I know. You're talking about this, right? I'm talking about this. That's completely different than the hack. But the show BP, me the the BP taking the, the, the money yeah. back was not a hack. That was their intentional design, no. of, right? No. Yeah, but but the third link is not about the BP's resizing the, the the money. It's about what did the hacker do to get the money in the first place? Yeah, I understand that. But what I'm trying to tell you is this: there's two things going on here. And don't tell me there's only one thing going on because I'm and I'm just trying to clarify. Uh, there was a hack you know that occurred, ha which you they provide the information it. of what happened, but there was also a situation that how they responded to that hack involved the BPs taking the money back. Right. Those are two separate things. Okay. One's a hack, one's a restoration of the hack, right? And that restoration yeah. of the hack of getting the funds back is what I'm interested in, not the hack. Oh, okay. See, okay. I want to know, I get it. how is that dispute resolution process handled? Under what jurisdiction? Who makes the decisions? How was it done? Who were the players involved? How many people did it involve? Okay. I'm very specifically after this information here alone. I could give a shit less about the hack. Shit, we could do that. Was... Oh, yeah. I mean... If at the moment took the he, it's not like it like he took the blame, but he took the the weight on his on his, on his shoulders to say, all right, we're gonna propose to the that's part of it. It's a, a way in in the first uh, link because he says more or less how the story went. He proposed at first he 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 proposed the hacker to you know just claim a white hat, which did not happen. But then he said, all right, since this is not happening, we're going to try to get back the, the, the funds by uh, dis, uh, disabling the permissions of the keys that the account was using. And he, he put a proposal, a, a, a multi-signature proposal to the, to the block producers, which they approved, 15 out of 21 approved to, to do that. And that's how they got the, fund, the funds back. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people were like, Echo "Oh that. shit, that just broke the backbone of trust in our network." Exactly. Network. But but that was just. I, an I questioned it myself. I questioned well, it myself too because we I was all like, did. All right, this is. I mean, it's good because everyone is getting back all the money, and that's what we want. We want people to to get the money to you know not. That's why you say intent of code. That's your Thank point. You, Doug. Exactly. Intent. And that's Solve very the problem important. With intent that one word. of code is law. Exactly. That very one word, because it's the intent of the code is law, not code is law. Because if that would have been the case, they would have just taken the money and that's it. But this is not Binance Smart Chain, right? This is not the wild west. We we have a, a purpose, and protecting the users is one of them. So yeah. uh, I questioned to myself because I was like, all right, we're gonna get the money back to the people. Okay, I, I I agree with that. But at the same time, okay, this is 
sort of, and it's going to look like a centralized decision, even though it's not, because 15 out of 21 block producers had to sign the proposal. The which only, they argument, did. only argument could be that uh, Eves has gotten too powerful, but I don't believe that. I think he's going to bootstrap and then we're going to have, he's going to have to bring himself out and, and, and go into the, he, he's, he's, if anybody could give away that baby after five years of, spearheading the ENF and building everything. He's going to have to give it up. And I think he will. I, it, I think also... Well, he we did, was very noble, too. I think it was very noble because he, he knew that it was going to look... It was not going to look very good at, at the beginning. So he said, okay, we're going to do this. And as a... a not, not sacrifice, but as a... In retribution... I'm going to take all, all the all the responsibility. I'm going to take the blame. And you can blame me for whatever happened if that's what you what you desire. I am I am uh resigning from from my position which he did. He did not he did not have a reason to, but he did anyways. I love it, Mark. I didn't know you're such the artist. Oh good. I'm glad you like those. Thank you, Doug. What what software do you use? I just added y'all to it. You have it in your inbox. Oh, you're using Canva. That's right. You're using Canva. Yeah, yeah, cool. and keep in mind, uh, Oscar. You, I, I'm so happy how you said all that uh, because you and I, Oscar, are on the same page. And I think you and I are also, Doug, because uh, you just learned it. But intent of code, but unfortunately, there are some balances of forces that deal with. We've given Eve's like a main line, and he's politically put himself right in the middle of like all that power and. That's a, that's a question, but uh, I think the community is stronger than just him. I think uh, number one, number two, I think he's a part of this community and, and he'll give it up. And right now he's just kind of bootstrapping everything. And I hope that's temporary. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take until he gets out of there. I mean, the first I remember that when he said that he was resigning from his position, a lot of people was not, I mean, a lot of people from the community, uh, we were not, we were not happy about that. And most of us did not agree with it. And, uh, he got a lot of messages in the, in the, in the D DeFi application that whatever, I don't remember the name of it, but we, we talked about it there, and we also did in the ES Nation group, and we said that we were not, uh, we were not happy with it, and we didn't agree. And a lot of people came came along and said that they did not agree with him resigning, but he still did anyway. Was that a TV? It's from the software that I use, it's a new new feature with the AI AI script writing. Okay. Okay, so we're going to be rebranding re to, to, from not the name, but another art for uh, for the logo. That's, what ha that's what's happening, right? We're going to have to change that in, in every page. Today, I'm going to show you how easy you can create your own converting video script using script out. Oh. Okay, I have to design a, an evaluation for tomorrow for, for my students. So I'm going to get going. Okay. Hey, Oscar. Bye, boys. Nice to see you, man. Yeah. Yeah, nice to see you too. It's great. It's always great talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Thanks for the quick meeting. All right. Uh, are you still sticking around, Mark? Yep. Um, what you want to talk about, if anything, I'm we haven't really caught up too much lately, as 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 we usually do when I'm active. Um, but man, I got to tell you, so much shit's going on. The day I did that 24 hour stream, I had a meeting before and after at like 2:30 in the morning because of the Australia time for this VC pitch. I didn't even make it the second time. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, but I guess yeah, we got really something in the morning also, like eight or eight or like uh, I guess thirteen, fourteen hundred uh, UTC. I can't remember. I got it on my calendar though. But uh, did you see that that thing that I just put in your uh, your DM? Yeah. 
that's an album I just released last night because I wrote it long time ago, but um, so like da da Sing Joy, Dan Sing Joy, uh, he and I were talking because I saw him and I said, basically, I want to be a part of what he's putting together, which is a second fractal. In this case, an Eden fractal. So we met as a, for an introduction. And in the middle of that, he tells me, you know, he's a musician, he's an artist. And we connected uh, personally uh, because we wanted to introduce ourselves a little bit, you know. And so he asked me to share my music and I only had one song on Emanate, which is that EOS, Spotify basically, but on EOS and uh, they're moving to like Polygon and Solana or something like that. <laughs> but regardless, I put my, my uh, other like six or seven songs on there and I, I created a release last night and I sent it to him or the night before. So I just put that in your DM. So wait a second, you're a musician? Yeah. What are you what kind of music do you do? Let me can I play some of this? Oh yeah. So like, dude, this is what I want to do right now. Like, right, I don't want to listen to this. So like for shit like this is what I want to do. I want to be able to put stuff like this in EOS open stage playground where people can just share their creative works. Like you're not trying to sell it, you're just trying to show who you are. You know what I'm saying? And it's like yeah. this place where we're not trying to do anything business. We're just playing, you know? And so like, so say someone tries, someone wants to do something. They want to build their first website. They want to play the guitar and they want to share this with their other EOS community members where it's a non-judgmental place where people can just encourage each other and share the learning process, you know, and then, and then just have an outlet for it. That's it. And so, so the EOS opens, the EOS OS playground is a YouTube channel Okay, but then what I'm gonna do is on EOS Open Stage, I'm gonna create a category that matches all my channels. And so every category, when, when you wanna search for things, I'll have a way to where you can filter out all the stuff by category or by tag or by, or by the people in it or by the people who made the video or whatever, to where you just can click on a button and it just sorts based on what you click on. So, It'll be a very uh, simple and efficient, like kind of taxonomy that helps you get to your information and is great for SEO. So like right now, for example, if I go to my categories, I don't even have my categories made. So I have to do all this shit. So all this stuff, like it only needs to be done once. And because I'm still building on my site, there's a pain in the ass. Cause there's just a lot of typing and clicking and copying and pasting and like making up images and blah, blah, blah. And so like, like this one, see, for example, See, see these categories on my screen? Are you looking at it? I am. Okay. EOS, well, you know the first two, right? EOS mediation, EOS open stage playground. That's the content that I was just talking about. I want to put some Kivonk. I want my interview with Kivonk in there. I don't want his to talk. I mean, I could, in this YouTube channel, okay, I want to interview Kivonk in person. But on the website, I can embed his video or the video of him in person, it's just a different YouTube channel. You follow me? But there's a category of kind of content that will be in that channel, but sometimes that content's already produced. So I don't need to make it published on YouTube. I just need to embed the YouTube video on my website. So then the EOS open stage is for people who for or in the case of a, like a pitch or just communicating to the community, that's what that channel's about. EOS Journeys is about people who want to offer up their life experience in, or, or their, their journey in EOS, maybe some Genesis members who are interested in committing to a longer partnership and multimedia production to where we can tell their journey, catch up to the present, and then follow their journey. EOS Index basically is us discussing the best way to optimize the indexing of EOS. EOS matchmakers is everything you can think matchmakers. So that means dating, social, friendship, 
employer, employee, peer programmer, uh, someone, a mentor. So any kind of match you need to make in the EOS ecosystem, that's for that channel. EOS ideas, people who do not want to go on the open stage because the EOS open stage is more like you have a mission critical message that you need shared with your community. That's like a business orientation action type deal. Whereas EOS ideas is more like a brainstorming area where you don't really want the judgment of people and their scrutiny. You just want to suggest ideas to more people suggest more ideas and just you know, explore the idea realm without judgment. EOS love, well, what's the role of love and what kind of love can we talk about? That's a very good question. And then EOS questions and answers. I'm more than happy, which is self-evident. I'm more than happy to nix any of these channels or categories, but I'm also more than happy to fully invest in the refining and formulating of detail in each of these categories based on what my initial perception is with the feedback of the community. You know, just as a novel way of organizing content in ways that are just not the same as the way they've done before. And I'm also addressing, um, you know, cause like all these kinds of things, it's sort of like they're, they're, it's not like yield plus, you know, it's not like trust EVM or a working group or something technical. These are all things that normal human beings can relate to. You know what I'm saying? These are words that non-blockchain people can relate to. But each of them sort of need to be branded. Like, for example, this one's a little controversial. EOS love, okay? But it's less controversial when you tie it together with this. EOSlove.net, and then you see this. You're not sharing that screen correctly. Why well, not? Why not? Oh, well, why didn't you tell me I'm looking at the wrong screen? The whole time you weren't even looking at the screen. I was trying to point out these these channels and stuff to you. <laughs> I didn't have the wrong screen, it's funny. But you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying we should do this, Mark. Okay, but see this discover EOS love? One of the things I heard is that there's no women in fractally, there's no women in EOS, and that it's a bunch of guys. And and then like, maybe that's a need amongst the US community. They need to meet women. And maybe there's a lot of women that would like to meet some fucking crypto fucking dudes. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's a market to be made around that. Maybe there's a market to be made around adult entertainment. Maybe there's a market to be made around events and event planning. And there's nothing to fucking do with the blockchain. I, maybe Doug Wu has a way where he, he can kill it and make a lot of money just in the entertainment side as a way to help grow the ecosystem. Maybe we could run tandem events like at Singapore and conferences where we have all sorts of, hey, let's go schmooze the big wigs and do this and do that. And for example, one example is Lee Horton, my game developer mentioned to me, one of the big dudes that maybe it was David Drake, I don't know. One of the big VC dudes that got billions of dollars of capital investment to command is a, is a, is a pool playing fanatic, loves pool. And it so turns out that I'm also a pool playing fanatic that doesn't really play much, but I'm a highly competitive pool player that pretty much knows the national circuit. Like, I, I don't know all the regional pool players, but I know all the people at the national skill level. And I've been involved with pool promotion for many years of my life. And I pretty much like have long standing ties to people in the industry. And I want to bring back my knowledge of the blockchain to the pool community and the value it can provide. Well, I started thinking about it like Singapore, dude, fucking, you know who's in Singapore? Alosius, Alosius, yeah. Dude, I could probably contact him and ask him, dude, Alosius, are you available on this date in Singapore? Because if you are, here's the deal. There's this conference going on about this thing called EOS. I'm part of this crypto community. And basically the deal is, is that this company rug pulled us for $4 billion we're rebuilding. They spent hundred million dollars in marketing so far. And I really wanna bring in the pool community and the professional pool players into what I'm doing in a way that provides incentive and, and return and value to you and the pool world. Do you have time or are you willing to, or do I have to pay you or whatever? And it'd be the kind of thing to where 
Like, I might be able just to swing it to where I don't pay him shit, but if I get him access to this place and, and he gets to be able to meet some people that just take him out to play pool and give him lessons or watch him compete or do whatever, and that he can just have a good time with them and get a connection with some fucking billionaires or some crypto people or just represent the pool or find a new sponsor or whatever. I don't know, but it's sort of like, man, it would be a shame if I didn't suggest it because I've been planning on building the infrastructure for an international takeover in terms of a global revolution of culture using the pool you know, community as my inroads. And now I'm thinking, man, I should get really strategic for September in Korea. Korea, or yeah, it's not Singapore, it's Korea. Why do I think Singapore? But you see, now it's Korea, we got Ga Young Kim, uh, the most famous, probably female Korean pool player. And if male players in Sing uh, Korea, I'm trying to remember some of their names or I'm spacing on them. But um, the fact is, is that the pool community is really small at the international level or at the higher skill levels. And that uh, I think the pool world has suffered not only from shysty deals with bad management and whatnot, but it's currently being funded right now partly by a fraudulent rug Polish looking company called Alpha Coin. And I want to award them to it without, uh, but basically this, these, these guys became the sponsor of CSI's New Deal and Mark Griffin, Predator Pro Billiard Source. So Mark Griffin, um, look at this shit. So I don't know, I don't know how to do blockchain research, but I did a little investigation in Alpcoin and I'm pretty certain, maybe it's the legitimate business of startup, but I'm pretty sure it looks very scammy to me. And they're based out of Asia or Philippines, I think, I forget. Download Watts, Blockchain Explorer. Oh, cool. See, like this is scary. Oh, man. Okay, that's, that's scary good, to me. Dude. No SSL, yet it's sending you to an SSL thing. That's scary. And now look, look at this, look. One timestamp today, and then three on May 26th, last one May 5th. So yeah, in the last, what's that? It's like a dead project. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So to me, I'm like, this might look good, but if someone's trying to convince the pool players that this is doing something good for pool, all I say is doing good for is for someone to waste their money sponsoring pool, like, because they're not really trying to grow a coin. They're just trying to probably launder money. Yeah. I have to a loss. Stuff, What's that? I said it looks shady. That's what I'm saying. And it's so fucking obvious to me. But what I'm saying is my I don't I don't that like there's some weird shit going on in the pool world. Like there's some fucked up shit going on. I, I don't want to get into it. But like look at this. Alpha coin crypto wallets. Let's see what this Windows wallet looks like. It's a zip. Let's see what the Linux wallet looks like. Let's see what the DMG file looks like. No, man, it's not good stuff right there, buddy. I don't know. They, it, just their own wallet and shit? Fuck that. No way. I'm not installing that. I'm not installing that. What the fuck is that shit? God damn. <laughs> it's got All a clean, right, it's got a command line interface, a QT, and a transmission. That's fucking scary. I meant the what? That's scary, dude. <laughs> that wallet looks scary as fuck to me. <laughs> mm. That's awesome. You like those. I meant the public one, by the way. What public one are you talking about? Yeah, I was going to ask him what he meant, but I took the only pronoun pointer there, which was the group we were just talking about, this one. <laughs> I made oh, him no, he wants the other one. He wants to make changes to the other group or moderate it and shit. All right. I don't really care. It's up to you. I mean, it's 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 less work for you, I figure, but then there's the control aspect. Of, no, it's know. fucking awesome, man. I, I love that. I just missed it. I would have made him admin as soon as I saw it. I hadn't seen it. I, I just breezed over it or something. That is a, a common 
thing with me and telegram by the way <laughs> shit going through my fingers which uh you know yeah it's a risk it's a risk i really wish i would have uh gotten been able to get up with uh ryan from uh, i know he's just too busy but uh, i want that uh see if i can get a uh account on the marketplace to be able to do translation on their net network on the fly i mean you johnny on the spotted it with video and i told june you read that right we're building video and documentation automation bring the cost way down and can't wait to do business with you buddy absolutely we'll point you in the right spot you can trust the etf basically you know what i mean it's going to be a no 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 like yeah seriously like i i, I figured i figured the thing to do was not charge for it but I didn't want to speak on behalf of the group. I just wanted to make sure this guy got the highest level of attention and the best service that we could realistically report him as pretty much like volunteer or post compensated, you know, experiment. Yeah, yeah. down the line, uh, we, we uh, I don't really know where we fit in terms of funding and stuff. So when he asked that, I thought that was very sweet. And I decided not to ask him, hey, feel free to give Doug a donation. That would have been the only path forward I could have seen, but I didn't want him. I just wanted him to have a fucking freebie. I'd have done you know what? You know what? I'll tell you what the, the thing I need or want, because I because it could be me that wants this, or it could be that the team wants this. Because when they hear what Doug wants and realize, oh, the team asked for the same thing, that makes a lot of sense. I want recognition in the form of a review or write-up or just an authenticated way where this user can say, thank you, X, Y, Z, you did this for me. You did not charge me. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Because this all goes back to my concept of free compensation. I believe that I can create an economy based on recycling of waste and what I call free compensation. So that means I get my life for free, okay? I, I, I mean, of course I need to eat and I need to be housed and certain things have, those have costs. But since I have this infrastructure cost covered, like I can maintain my survival, I have a certain amount of time. I give it away for free, but there's a cost to it, right? But I don't expect anything directly back. I just give it away for free, believing that anyone who receives freely will intend to reciprocate if they have the ability to. And if they can't at that present moment, at some point in the, if there's some way that that giving can be recirculated back. In, in, so I suppose, suppose the person I did some translation for has the excess of say um, puppies, okay? Like uh, Rottweilers. And someone really wants a Rottweiler. You know what I'm saying? And they're in that community. And that person that has, um, that needs a, wants a, wants a dog or a Rottweiler has, has a lot of, uh, has a lot of recycled computer parts. You know, to where I can go, oh, you give this to that person and you give me the computer parts and everything is sort of like this person that had the Rottweiler couldn't sell it. They couldn't get any money for it. But now uh, they're getting, you know, uh, they're getting instead web services. But this and this exchange where they get executed, where I get the computer parts this is the kind of thing to where stuff that would normally be going into the garbage that normally be thrown away and destroyed. I actually want to use that as my form of revenue of raw materials for building so that offsets the costs for building my universities that will be supported between underwriting sponsorships to advertising to just people volunteering their time in sweat equity as teachers or mentors or whatever to gain something to gain recognition and so there's all sorts of kinds of things to where i need a cookie cutter way to basically to validate the fact that someone did something at a certain time and that that thing that they did impacted other real people and those other real people have a way to interact and respond with that evaluation. So it's no different than an eBay or Yelp or con uh, cumulative aggregate review, but it's gonna be much more defined and detailed than just an aggregate. And some people don't want to share the private information. Some people are okay with exposing every little thing. 
some people are okay with submitting it as long as they're not, as they remain anonymous, you know, there's going to be all sorts of different kinds of contracting that's necessary to make it fit or suit the user comfortability with the interface. And so like, I don't know where fucking Fractally is going. I don't know where EOS is going, but I know I'm going somewhere and this is the way I like to go. And I have all these like pre-developed ideas that I'm more than willing to give away for free because if someone takes these ideas and develops them faster than I can, I'm happy because I just want to develop it back. Like as long as it's all open source, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like, it's not like getting get these things criteria. published. That is crazy. Like, I. Oh, I know why, because I stopped publishing them in the ETF private. Okay, I see. Hey, let's let's, let's see what you're doing. Share your screen now. I'm uh, doing something on a different laptop. Oh, okay. I thought you were doing something for ETF. That was Yeah, I am. I'm I'm in the ETF private group. I'm I was gonna I was doing some cleanup really. Uh, I was making sure that all of the images got pasted. Right, cool, cool, cool. So uh ETF, uh, sorry, it's a E. Looking for your temporary, okay, temporary group for that. I got that, that, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I think all of them did actually get posted. So that's sweet, man. Uh, now we've got the barcode. We got the original circle. We've got a colorful hexagon. We got an array of hexagons. We got a non-circle. We got just a black hexagon. We got super colorful small hexagons, and then I that whole, like, grid of hexagon thing. Oh, that, I unshared, that, I unshared that, my screen. I want to share my screen again now. I changed my mind. Ready? That should set us up nicely. Look at look at what I'm gonna do here. Look what I'm doing right here. Look, see that? Oh wow, cool. So so now what we did is we used Telegram as a cloud hosted solution that copies to the nodes of our phones. Our phones are acting as local nodes because it caches in your browser or in your Telegram thing, right? All right. Every time you download it, you can just get it directly off your phone. That's why Telegram is so fast. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to keep downloading it every time. So now, now that it's there, I can just select all and I can export it. And now look at this. 51. Look at that. Look at this. Did you know you could do that? Oh, I think I, I generates did. HTML, but look at that. It organizes it based on photos. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Images. What are the difference? Oh, those are the symbolic things there. That's not what you want. Files. Okay, because those, I guess, were JPEGs and things. I don't know why they consider those files and not images. And then CSS. So this is mainly the structure for this web thing. But my point is- Have all of the files in those folders right there? Did it pick all of them up somehow as some type? Exactly, that's my expectation, yeah. So what yeah. I'm saying is this all that I showed you is very basic, simple stuff with Telegram, Telegram that most people don't know that like whenever I get to a new program, I always try to figure out what you can do with it. So like, here's another thing you can do with Telegram. I don't know if you know this. And I don't know if I showed the other thing to you, like take this. Oh, no, 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 watch this. You know, let's go, right. Like this. And then, uh, so like, like this copy message link, come out here. Start a new private browser, right? This is an incognito private browser. No cookies, no password authentication, right? So watch what happens when, uh, come down here though. I'm grabbing the wrong thing. Watch what happens, ready? Do you see what that is? Yeah, I do. So this is a publicly viewable HTML page that's auto-generated from every public Telegram chat. So that means if you know the URL, you know how to display every single message in Telegram that's public that has a URL, and they, you do not need to have Telegram. Yeah, yeah. So do you know how 
potentially available information in public telegram groups are now based on that? Yeah. So do you think it's a good place if you want to have private communication? No. Do you think it's a good place if you want things to go viral? <laughs> if you want to blow things up and you want and you want a way to put it point to an authoritative source where now when I click here, look, when I click here, ready? Bot beware because you don't know who, if someone's coming in as a real person or a bot. Because the second you put that on a real page, you can track more bots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if I start posting and embedding them, which I already have, but you know, it's like this shit. Did you see some of my more recent posts? I'm getting more edgy and outrageous with my e posts. Turn on the second name. Did you see this one? <laughs> Did you see this one, Mark? Uh, yeah, I didn't read it, but I, I did see it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Did you see what song I played? No. Who let the dogs out? The question is, who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? I can't believe how popular that song got. The reason I think it's the perfect song for this. Is it sort of like the hack with EOS and the reclamation of the funds? Like who let the dogs out? It's sort of like, is the money the dogs? Like say the money is the dogs, say the tokens are the dogs. So a hacker hacked the blockchain and let the dogs out. So they got the dogs, the dogs are the money, are the tokens. But though maybe who let the dogs out is not the tokens because what happened was that event allowed Yves LaRose or BPs or whatever to exercise authority to take back the money. So they're really the dogs who got let out to utilize and exercise a form of control through an intentionally planned event so that they could exercise authority and, and create this thing with like the block production. But then there's an aspect of Blue Dog and Blue Dog always banning people and shaming them and saying all this stuff and being all this nuisance and negative energy where everyone knows but no one's doing anything about it so maybe he's the dog that's been set free and who's been let out and then Doug Wu comes along and <laughs> and he wants to like catalyze the creative energy of the community of people here that want to get shit done but they're sort of confused about human organization and governance and the best way to get things done and everyone bickering and fighting in these telegram groups and people going here and there and he's basically saying i am going to come and release the unlimited potential of all you all people who want to run with me and we're the dogs that are being let out so for me it's sort of like this way where you can interpret like this song in a lot of different ways but the way i'm thinking about it is for multiple dimensions you know, multiple perspectives that are sort of like the narratives in my mind are sort of entertaining to me. So this whole thing is like, part of it is like this. I don't necessarily care if it's true or false. I want it to be true. I want to believe it to be true, but I don't know if it's necessarily true, but it doesn't matter because what I'm up to is creating a fictional narrative and a philosophy and a belief system all based in a in a fictional narrative, but that I use this fictional imaginary thing to really help me in my real life as a way for communicating or whatever. And so all this stuff is absolutely like, it's just sort of like, it's so beautiful for me. I'll tell you, Mark, because it's like, I have an audience to play for. It's just like, you're sitting there twiddling with the guitar. Thank you. So long, right? And you build your skills up. And one of these days you want to perform for some people and you want to make it feel good you want to create energy in them or whatever and you don't just want to be someone there just developing muscle memory necessarily for no performance right 
And so for me, all this stuff is like me having fun. And this is my performance. This is like my creative expression with blogging and writing and creative writing and creating this narrative that I have this dream over doing where people don't even realize and know what's going on. So now it's like, here you are and we're talking and look at you jamming. Like, I would like to take this clip out of this video to put on EOS Playground where we could like have a discussion and then even like right. play music or just do something, you know what I'm saying? Where it has nothing to do with about building, res gaining respect or Eden governance. It's just us having fun using our creative energies. What do you think about that? that? You like it? Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Do you ever play with other people? Hello. What was the question, sir? My chick is going to be mad at me. Your chick? Show me how you do that trick, the one that's really seen, she said, the one that makes me laugh, as she threw her arms around my neck. Show me how you do it, and I promise you, I love that. I'll two songs that I practiced. That's one of my two songs. That was beautiful. Thank you. That fella kept up with himself really well. I saw him in concert recently, like on YouTube. He's wonderful. 
Who's that? Uh, I want to say Peter Parker. It's more like Robert Plant or uh, Robert's uh, the uh, cure guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. He hey, looks great. Like he looks great. He's overweight as fuck. He just sits there and sings the same old songs, and uh, he sings them perfectly. Well, you he, know what? It took me a long time to learn how to play that on acoustic because, as you know, that song has no acoustic guitar. So I sort of folkized it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I basically folk eyes everything. I have like a Daft Punk song I sing. Dude, let's start an EOS band, man. I'm down for it, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, can we do a real time show? Or is there too much latency with the internet? <laughs> well, there's not not too much latency because you're also screen sharing, so there's plenty to go around, you know. Well, I mean, if we have too many band members, I don't know how that actually is going to work. That'll be interesting. It won't work. It'd be broken, just like everything, and it'll just. But it would be, you know, what it's, it would be sort of weird. I wonder what would happen, like how the sound would sound if it was like it was like time delayed. Is that great, man, we just need to just basically do it because it's match made in heaven right there. I, I'll tell you, that was a great little jam, no doubt. You want to hear my other song? Go for it. This one I used to call, well, this one's sung by, originally by CCR, called Lodi, but I call it Tahlequah now. Just about a year ago, I set out on the road, seeking my fame and all its shame, looking for a pot of gold. Things got worse and things got bad. I guess you know the tune. Oh no, I'm stuck in town call again. Bravo, bro. Rolling on the rails. I'll be walking out when I go. I was just passing through. Must be seven years or more. Ran out of time and money. Looks like I took of my friends. Oh Lord, I'm stuck in the claw again. Wow. Oh, actually, there's one more voice. The man from the magazine said I was on my way. But somewhere we lost connections, ran out of songs to play. I can make the town a one my fame. Looks like my plans are through. Oh Lord, I'm stuck in Taco again. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, I love so much. That's amazing. I love how you do that, man. That's nuts. And I only had a dollar for every song I sung. For every time I play guitar, well, people sat there drunk. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I know I'll be on the next train back to where I live. Oh, no. I'm stuck in Tampa again. You know what I need to do? I need to change that song to EOS. And I need to like cry like I'm stuck in EOS again. You know, like say like, like make fun out of being stuck as a token holder, not wanting to let go and then transform that into comedy. And then like, like sob in the story, but then afterwards, like do like a fucking empowerment speech or some, like, do you guys feel stuck where you're at? You know, how many people know honestly, because we want to be happy, we want to feel good, positive about things. But a lot of us have this lingering cloud over us in the CS community. So I'm here. I want to talk about this. Is it okay that we talk about this? You know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of shit that I want to do. I want to do like organizational development. I did. My sister, she's a fucking MFT. Like, uh, what is it called? ISTP therapist. It's like just her alone and the number of connections of people she has into like different kinds of. Modalities. I've already been talking to my uh, mediator boss dude or boss, my instructor, over alternative dispute resolution methodologies and high-end tech 
world and in international world and like with the latest and greatest stuff and who's up to what and like take a look into this like he's sending me shit and so it's like i'm really excited because i'm now i'm finding a match all this stuff can fit and match into the eos like just today i was uh i, I guess i came across a dispute resolution thing and that's something that practically also talks about too but what i'm afraid of of, of mark is that as much as we try to design a smart contract out everything through this nuance to where you can just let the contract run it, I think humans need to be able to trump technology. There needs to be a human in the loop that can enforce intent of code over something going haywire and not doing what it's designed to do. And when it comes to mediation and how this respect thing going, there is a very human factor in it, right? And so I need to know and I want to know what, what like, what is practically think or like how does he even eat him because i started reading about how do they deal with the dispute resolution there's some process they have but i don't understand it i'll tell you the answer dan's writing a second book to cover the second half of his whole mother project that is enforcement oh shit are you telling me what the fuck oh my gosh oh my gosh that's interesting There you go. Put it on. Hey, hey, Mark. Mark. Can I put that shit up on my uh, website and the open stage playground thing? Your your emanate or what is that? What audio was that? Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna put you up there with Kivon. I want to get like everybody's personal shit. I'm like, I, of course, that sounds great. Huh? Yeah, that sounds great. That's why I put it out there, just to like uh, kind of be like, all right, there's that. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so let me get this out of here. And then oh, I need to change this homepage. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to put a YouTube channel. That's a YouTube video. Let's find, let's find a section of the YouTube, man. I want you to listen to some of this shit. It was pretty damn good, honestly. Some of the things. Douglas Butner, dude, he fucking we closed it, dude. I went for I had that thing running over 12 hours or 24 hours. And I actually went over, I wanted to quit early, but Douglas Butner kept me up till the end. And Phoenix came in at the end towards there too. It was pretty cool. That is great. I, I don't think I've ever talked with him. We even had Dan join us from, uh, we, we traveled back in time and brought Dan into the future. <laughs> oh, uh, I was going to say, uh, that's amazing. So I was going to say, tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, that event that you set up and you, you're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. This is it right here. I'm going to find it. Hold on. This is me and Douglas screwing around. Let's find the part with Phoenix. And we talked for a long time. Okay, so. Okay, so that was the last one. Hold on. There should be one after that, or no, he must have came on at the end then. Where is he? Oh no, no, this is this is after. So it must have been before. So he must be in this one. Because there were periods where I was just by myself, but pretty much there was usually someone there most of the time. Oh really? Oh, okay, okay. Your live stream content. Chat. Will it be um, able to be a, uh, a YouTube re repository where you can just go scroll That's exactly through? Why I'm using it. That's exactly why I'm using it. Right now, there's actually a triple repository going on because it's pushing it to Facebook, it's pushing it to YouTube and to Twitter. And I don't have to pay for any of the services. So, so I don't have to have any sort of hard drive. I don't have to have any Right. Yeah. But, and and that's, that, that's actually potentially one of the answers to your. Uh, Okay. So that one is not it. I don't know what happened. Maybe I have to. Uh, 
um, maybe it's in the live section. Let's check something real quick. Whoops. Oh, you know what? I might have done that one on a different channel because of some reason it glitched. I think I switched channels because I couldn't get one to work. I knew that was going to screw me up. And so if that's the case, I think I went to my standard. No. Let's try this one. And if not, then I'll have to use the downloaded. I haven't played with a pick in so long. I uh, hate I put, picks. I uh, yeah, I, I don't actually. I normally do all acoustic. I only uh, grabbed this uh, electric mic like, yesterday. Oh, yeah. Here's the end of this. I just went nuts on it. I was like, oh my God, that was that felt great. <laughs> Electrics are always cool, you know. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's where Oscar comes in. So we went over like stuff like his repo to Meta Eden and the practically repositories. No, I'm looking forward to watching everybody grow with their little things that they're really interested in, though. I just can't keep track of them. I know. It's too, I'll, dude, don't worry. I'll have an index for you. That's Phoenix. It's not a very welcome What I think is going to happen is there's going to be such an abundance of uh, cool people doing <laughs> shit in our community that we're just going to never leave our community. We're always going to be like, Hey, Douglas, you want to join some interesting thing? I hear you've always been down for whatever. Because me and that guy, Dan Singjoy, we're like, you know, let's let's talk music a little bit down the line over the next you know, few years. You know, we'll, we'll talk music, you know, because and art and uh, and blockchain. And uh, yeah, let's start the conversation right now. I mean, why yeah, not? yeah, we and we did, man. He, he was what kind of inspired me to put that emanate uh, release together. I went up, I got an external hard drive, put it all on. I uploaded it to mu Apple Music. I shared it. He said it didn't work. I said, all right. And so I put it all on. You guys just put this together? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Let's push it out there then. Okay. I need to get a new, I, um, I need to do a new front end and I don't want to deal with it right now. But anyways, what am I doing? Turn on the Walmart lamp. How's that for let there be light? The new let there be light. <laughs> I got this like new but old amp. So Mark, uh, what do I call this? Uh, what do you call what? You call what? Moon, should I just call it Moon Rings Earth Man? Oh, well, yeah, stick with the flow, you know, Moon Rings for sure. I know, but what I, should I put like a little bio on you or your anything at all or identifying information? Yeah, you tie it to one of like my bios. I would say, uh, uh put, put, let's see, I can get, I can get that in the chat for you. You want a bio? Well, because all this has is this. Well, let me, I'm looking. Hang on 10 seconds. I got to look at the video. I'm looking. Show me. What does what it got? That? Yeah. And that's it? Those three things. Mark, okay. Moon Rings. Right. Let me see if I can get uh, get something nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, you could put I share because I share. That might be nice. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just keep it there. Nice and keep easy. Keep it short and simple is fine. Yeah. You can always improve it later, but just get it started, right? We make new yes. iterations. We take time. We reflect on it. Other people suggest. We just keep it improving continually. And put markshear.net in it. Okay. That, that's for see, sure. See, see, eventually I'm going to get to the point where you'll have your own login on my site and you can just manage your own shit yourself. Oh, that'd be awesome, man. That'd be awesome. 
So I have one message. Oh, okay, here we go. So you can't see it, but I just put markshear.net in the thing. Let's see. In the chat. You know, you know what I'm gonna do? Watch this. This is crazy. This is crazy that I'm gonna do this, dude. I wanna do this. I'm good. I've got this whole new short form thing going on thinking. Oh, that embeds it me. About this idea. Because this is the album. And then you said markshear.net. Yeah. Okay. And then this one is this hyperlinked already? But you know what we really should do is put a different um, so now what we need to go is over here, permalink. Oh gosh, I got to fix that. I got a new category. So I haven't even gotten my category straightened out. For now, I'm just going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this playground. Because I'm putting this in the EOS open stage playground uh, category. I think what I'm going to do, I, I think saying EOS open stage playground is redundant. You know what I'm saying? We're on the EOS Open Stage website. I don't want that many characters because it'll bleed off the screen kind of thing. So I just leave it with Playground. And I can put that in a subcategory later. I'm not going to worry about it. But now what I'm going to do is this. Now watch this. Mark Shear. OK, I'm going to put in Moon Rings because these are related to SEO, but also could be things for other words. Emanate. And then. Then what I'm going to do is June 2002. And then see, because this is June 2002 here, the publish date immediately, it is June 2002. I'm not going to change it, leave it alone. And now I'm just going to publish it. It's like. There you go. I'll fix up the site more later and I'll make explanations and I'll fix all this shit. There'll be more menus. I'm going to make this a membership driven site eventually and um, have Facebook logins and fucking all sorts of shit. But see, like, this is just standard copy. This is just bullshit copy. So, this site is not really released, but I'm sticking this stuff here to get SEO uh, value. See the search engines. Oh. This looks amazing. You got the emanate picture right there. How did you get that emanate picture? Make music yours. Did you it put came in there? through the it pulled WordPress pulled it in automatically. Oh. And look at uh 
See, now these don't have featured images. They should have featured images. And I need to fix that. You'll so see when I get one it. Is going to be me? Huh? Is one of those going to be my music? No. Uh, it, well, yeah. It's yours. Is, oh, yours okay. cool. So basically, the, right now, they're based in chronological, most recent first. But see how you're in playground. Eventually, see what happens is like when you click on a word like this, it will show you only playground posts. Or if you click on EOS Translation Foundation, it'll only show you EOS Translation Foundation posts. If you click on Team Contributions, it will only show you pages for the team contributions for the EOS Translation Foundation team. If you click on Doug R. Wu, then it will buy Doug R. Wu, then it only shows you the contributions by me on the team. You get what I'm saying? Like I can sort it all different levels to where it's a super intelligent thing to where I just want to see all things X, Y, Z, and you just click on the button and it sorts by that function. So like right now, for example, I haven't broke these all down. I have a lot of work to do on this. But what I'm trying to do is just le at least get the links in. Like, here's this guy. This should be in Playground. This is Kivank. Look at this. Have you seen this one? No, I don't think so. This guy's this guy's he's he's making this song, but he's also one of the most by um, most vocal directly to me instigators of my research because he's lost millions of dollars and he's he's hurting from it. But you wouldn't he won't tell you that. He seems to be doing pretty damn good. Can you hear it pretty well? Can you not hear it? I'm not that well. Here, let me do this. Play it while I get some more water. I'm going to post it in the chat for you. If you want to play it. So like, so like uh, I think I should make a category under playground for songs. So I can go add new category. Songs. And then I put it under where's playground? Something is glitching with uh Man, it'd be great if EOS was successful. It'd be so fun to to relive these. It'd be what? It'd be really cool to kind of relive. Just know that. I don't know if EOS is successful. There's a hella 
OG story. <laughs> there's like there's like a four year OG story. <laughs> it's, it's got so many different fun weird things in it. You know, it, it, it has hey, listen, I'm operating from the perspective that it is going to be successful. That's why I'm working so hard documenting our personal lives because this could be like the raw material for the making of like a huge motion vision. Which is all serious. Like we, there could be people reenacting our lives. You know, or they could actually, we could be playing our lives, or this could be used as like gold. You know, you never know. You see the documentary now, you know. That's what I'm planning for, yeah, honestly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry if that bothers you. Maybe I didn't well. know. I didn't know you like to play guitar and that you're ready to be a superstar too. Yes, all of the above. I'm fine with it, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, I had no idea. It's so funny, dude. Wait till you see this then. Watch this shit. Oh my God. I wonder if I can find it. Where is it? I might have taken it off, but I had a, I, st I made a song for, I tried to sing for the EOS community a while ago. Ah, oh, you're chicken. I love that. I love that. Bro, I don't even need that there anymore. On your shoulder? No, this testing video. Okay. That would know my chicken's right above me, right here. Uh, let's see if I can find it. This might be it. Oh no, that's CVC. Um, this one, this one. I love it. Love it. No, I want to find this one where I actually was talking to the EOS. I was making a video for EOS community. It, is it this one? Oh, this one's in the library. <laughs> Shit, that scared me. <laughs> Might have find guitar tuner around here, you know. I could actually put on. Hey, can I, you want to? Can I show you something with Facebook? Yeah. All right. So, do you use Facebook? No, I really don't. Okay. I see. use Messenger. I use Messenger. Now I got this Oculus Rift. I'm looking to move, use it more. All right. Well, see this right here where I'm at. This is my this is my Facebook profile, right? So uh, now watch this, right? Okay. So you right click on it. View page source. All right. Control F. Wow. Okay. okay now watch this. Uh, B E L I. Okay. See how it says active list. Okay. Yeah. There's a series 
And then you see this one right here, last active times. Whoop, this one here. So all these numbers in between the two, watch this. See these numbers? Yes. Between active list and last active times, watch this. This is what I do. I go like this and I don't tell people what I'm doing, but I do this because I just want to keep a record. Now I go like that, I post it. Now watch what happens, that's what I do. This is what I, I'm gonna give my AI or an intern or whoever, they can come back and figure this out. These are the people that are actively connected to my account content. That means they're like looking at a page or a profile or a post that I made right now, this second, like the browser is open or their interface is open sitting on a page. And I've tested this over time. So what you do is you take that name, okay? So no, normally you just have Facebook and you have the name. See that? You go like this, you paste over it and that will convert to the person. So Chris Alexander is the probably, I know Chris, he probably interacts with me and socks my <coughs> page more than anyone else. So the fact that he's actively connected does not surprise me, okay? So like the next one down. So basically what it, this is, is, this is a way to figure out who's actually looking at your page in the real time. They don't have to like, they don't have to comment, they don't have to do anything. You can have, see my sister, doesn't surprise me. So periodically I check it. So then I can also do this, as I can start making a bunch of posts, like if I make a bunch of pool posts and I get a lot of pool players. Momento, I have, I've been sort of interacting with them a little bit lately, but not too much. Okay, so now that's, that's what you call uh, real-time active viewers. The, the remaining list is not real-time, but historical. Cool, CJ's thinking of me, that's cool. So like, if I go back to my home here. So why do you paste it? Because I wanna see who it is. So you don't paste it into a post, you just paste it to store it just to look at each number. Yeah, because here, let me show you what I mean. Let me see if I can demonstrate this to you. Like, uh, how can I demonstrate this? I might be able to do it this way. Why did you post that with all those numbers, I guess? What's the point of posting it? So I have a snapshot in time. I know oh, okay. I was looking at my site on this day at this time. Because when I post it, it puts the timestamp on it. Right? Yeah. Follow me? So like, I automatically, unless I modify the timestamp, which I generally- oh, Damn, is that you playing pool? Yeah. I'm a highly competitive pool player and former state champion of uh, nine ball in Alaska. 10-4, 10-4, okay. Oh, see, look. See, look, 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 look. He messaged me 904. Remember, I, this is the number one guy. He's online looking at my page. He sees that I come online, he messages me because he was online. I already knew he was online before he messaged me because of what I did. Yeah, I see it. I see. I, I'm surprised Facebook lets us have any information at all. Well, that's a hack sort of. It's not, it's undisclosed. Like I figured it out. I've reverse engineered it based on an article that was expired. Like a developer, is it a developer's page? It's just a source code, dude. It's just a source code of the page. Yeah, it looked like it was as simple as page source. Yeah, it's, it's just page source. That's all it is. See, let me show you what else. So these ones here, these are some combination of user ID and a timestamp. The second column is a timestamp of some sort. You can see they're incrementing. 28, see that's, see how this ends in 2018, this ends in 2018. And then these ones, see, like this, I believe, is actual uh, as, as an actual user. Yeah, Bernie Garma. Bernie, I'm probably going to call him any minute now. See, now I know that Bernie was on. In fact, the other way you can verify it is like this kind of shit. Like you can see if they're online, it would sim say similar. Uh, where does it show it? Uh, uh, I guess they took it off this. Right here.
Whoops. Look, look at this. What's up with this, dude? What are you What's looking up at? What's up with that, dude? This homie's posting his scan. Uh, where'd it go? Why did it go to it? See, look, I put this one there, like, pre-release viewing of unfinished site USMC is here for historical seeding of the interweb for bots and user clicks to stimulate link to secure line and tell me That's so selfish, but they're probably not even going to read that. They'll probably see this part. So all it is, is is forcing them to click through to my site. Real video? You know what I just realized too? With that EOS index site, I should probably do all the sister chains too. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to keep up with it, remain relevant, get real diluted that way, but I think you could handle it with your- uh... Well, because if I do the pages in the categories right, it won't overload the viewer. And it's just like more content to do eventually. I, I could I could structure it in a, in a fashion. You should absolutely do all the EOS. <laughs> no, I should because I want to dominate all the keywords. Like, what good was it? What good is it if I'm only if I can only get you number one in EOS and I can't help you with Wax or Telos or Helios or Bayos or Sky Sovereign? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like I want to be. It's like I want to be able to premeditatedly plan for and dominate the keyword market for all the players of the ecosystem like on their behalf. And the way you do that is by publishing content about them and pointing to their website and talking about them. Love that, love it, love it, love it, good idea. You do what they want you to do when you're marketing. Just do marketing. All right. I'm having fun with these, some of these channels. Oh, dude. Oh, hey, one more thing. Uh, oh, that's a sweet symbol you got right there. Just a straight up circle. It's going to be basically, that's the translation image right there already. Huh? What? You mean this? That's not that. No, that, that image is not in our set that I published. Uh, do you, you know see? why? You know why? Why? It's fucking version 1.0, dude. I love it. It's this from all the early. Cause I'm old school, dude. I've been here from the fucking beginning. I'm fucking OG. Hell yeah, fucking, man. Yeah, practically, man. <laughs> yeah, my, oh, oh, my homie Mark Shear made that, dude. That's version 1.0. Yeah, that's I fucking that's... left that sucker in our YouTube channel. I love it. It's the most it's beautiful ETF symbol ever right there, man. That was before all the letters. Because the thing is, it doesn't look good and clean when this this is how I deal with it most of the time, like this size over here. Because because like normally you don't ever see that. You only see this because I'm on the channel part. But look at this. Let's look at some of our stats. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting it. I'm getting that thing, by the way. Look at the, oh, look at this. Returning viewers, 10. Unique viewers, 
691. <laughs> wow. So we're getting some people that are coming back, but we're getting a lot of new traffic too. But those could be bots. Don't get too excited. I'm excited, man. 691, that's a big number. Wait, don't we have a thousand? We have a thousand views, don't we? <clears throat> uh, let's see. This is cumulatively possibly more than that. This is the last 28 days. Oh, that's awesome. I have this. No, I don't think I do. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Top geographies, UK. Most of our traffic is coming from Mel Pierce and Michael of Bywire. Wow. I bet yeah. you. I bet, bet you. It's like probably, look, 95 views from the UK. Wow. Now look how, look, 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 look. YouTube search, 662 over 789 came through YouTube searches. God, dog. Look at this. Impressions, almost 100,000 now. I tell you what, um, I don't think that what we did, what our stats are, are necessarily, necessarily abnormal or normal. I mean, like, really what it comes down to is what's the content and what's the demographic or the level of interest. And being that we sort of have it's not like a, it's not like this is everybody in the world's interesting topic that they want to know. It only has appeal to a limited subset, right? But mm -hmm. that limited subset still is a is not like only like it's only interesting to ten people or a hundred people. There's you know how many people across the world could be interested in fractal governance or fractally or whatever, right? And so our our, our translation foundation. So, so what I'm, I'm wondering or guessing is there's a certain amount of these that are bots or fake accounts or whatever, but then there's gotta be a certain amount that are actually real. And the fact that most of the traffic is coming from YouTube searches tells me it's more real because if it was just like a bot, I don't think that, I think that bots come through more like scraping than searching. I got you. So like if our link if our link was on somewhere else, a bot might find it, but a bot's not gonna go into a YouTube search engine and look for it, you know? Yes, yes. But it also tells you, look, this is another interesting thing. So we have very few subscribers and most of our tracking has new traffic, not from subscribers. Hang on, I gotta look, go kill a bug. Big only two button. notifications, only two from notifications. So nobody is like getting push notifications yet. Ah, uh, fuck. Killing roaches around where I live is like killing dino, like killing huge reptile dinosaurs or some shit. Oh shit, dude, I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm sad. What you so sad about, man? This is fucking bonkers, dude. We had a flurry. We had a bot attack. Is all it was. Those aren't real people. It's okay. But no, it's weird. So see this spike. There's something I did on this day that caused this. <gasps> I know what it was. It was I love. Language. I love hearing my my post every time I post it because you got you're really good at notifications, basically. Yeah, I try to keep on things. I don't look at all of them. I turn off all of them except for certain ones. Like all my all the other groups on EOS, I shut off except for ours and direct. But or this one, I didn't see. Like I'm looking at China's directly, and I don't need the notifications. I'm about to. Uh... Get my kitty some food. She's gonna be so hungry. Meet Bella. Hello. We know you. 
Very good. This home brand. <laughs> you ever make broth? Yeah. How do you make it? Uh, whatever kind, I, whatever mean I have, just add water and other shit. <laughs> I don't know. Boil yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I wasn't sure. I'd be roasting, roasting my bones a lot. I fully believe in, in like getting the maximum value out of. I like cooking with whole foods. So like say I bake a chicken and then I eat it, I'll I'll put the carcass and make soup out of it or something, you know. Oh wow, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So so how do you like to make soup? Just put your vegetables in it afterward and be done with it, and some salt or something, or do you got some fancy tricks? It depends on what ingredients are available for the soup. Oh yeah, I always 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 <laughs> like when I use uh, salt in soup, I never use regular table salt. <laughs> but I always use pink Himalayan salt because pink Himalayan salt has a full micronutrient blend that's consistent with the, like the average mineral layer of the earth or whatever, that's what humans need. So like Himalayan salt or sea salt or dry lead baked salt or whatever you call it actually has micronutrients in it and nutrients. It's like vitamins almost, you know, whereas Sodium chloride, too much sodium chloride, is, that's a different kind of salt that, you know, you need a little bit of salt, but too much salt is no good. But sodium chloride works for you, you ask me. It's better to have a help. Because it's just like how, uh, did you know that in, um, when they first processed white flour, the standing army of Great Britain decreased in height on average by one foot in the course of 10 years. And they oh. traced that study back to the fact of adding uh, uh, processed white flour into the soldiers' diets because they started uh, manufacturing, mass manufacturing bread and processing flour. And what oh. they realized is that when you take out the husk of, and you just have the inside, the, the calories and the starches with no nutrients, in order to digest the starches and sugars, it actually needs certain types of nutrients like magnesium and calcium or whatever. I forget what manganese. And so what happens is, is that um, if it's not present in the food that you eat, then as your body's digesting it, it strips out the nutrients from your body to catalyze the digestive process. So what happens is by eating food, you gain calories, but you actually get rid you actually have nutrients being stripped out of your body rather than supplying your body. And when you have a problem of starches and sugars already inherently being devoid of any proteins or nutrients and just basically sugars that create an imbalance, um, it has all these, uh, you know, and then you add to the fact that most people will drink tap water that has chlorine or chloramine in it. And chlorine and chloramine disrupts the bio, uh, flora, intestinal tract, uh, all micro biome organs, organisms that help digestion and immune system. And so once you start like in, uh, getting your body like chlorinated and out of whack, then it breeds, it makes an a imbalanced environment. So you get into, you know, you're more apt to breed things and then you get into the pharmaceutical things. And it's sort of like, Trying to correct your body with pharmaceuticals it doesn't really, it's not the same as being in a state of original health. And um, it's sort of like in my mind done it as a way to just keep people, keep people dependent on, on it. Yeah. And not really solve, <laughs> solve problems, but just keep charging you for it. But of course it's paid through some subsidized, you know, and often way like through medical insurance or that whole incentivization thing, man. man. I hope we crack the code, buddy. Dude, I'm not relying on Fractally and EOS to figure it out. That's that stuff for sure. Like, I'm happy to participate in that and support it and do whatever I can, but I'm not waiting around to figure out a way to incentivize people and reward them for it 
if Web three can't get their act together fast enough for Web for for Web two, Doug Wu style gets his act together. Because like I already was thinking about doing something similar with a membership plugin that allows you to earn a reward point type deal. Like it's almost like respect. You do certain actions, you know, you get certain type of reward incentives. And I, I mean, I want to use it more to organize people right now. Ah, like damn. I want to use the web tools to organize an army of content creators and web producers because there's no good for me to train people and those people can't create value that can convert into like real money real eos real food real something you know what i'm saying and it's got to be able to do it easily and consistently and start somewhere and then just build so for example if i just get people trained on the youtube video production i'd be like i am I'm not necessarily the best YouTube marketer because there's actually some really good videos that I would like to watch and share, but they're protected content, but I can always watch them and digest it. But all the technical stuff, like how to upload the image, how to set up the stream, how to, you know, um, how to, you know, uh, manage channels, how to do the language translation or any kind of assistance in any of that, like it'd be pretty easy to just focus on that alone and you should be able to find a, a captive like you should be able to I, I don't know maybe maybe not i think if you marketed it right you could probably um if you can't find oh. the job just helping people with their own youtube channels like people who want to start it like older people or whoever's you could probably just work youtube channels and find a way to monetize it as long as we're working the right things like right now you would, unless you were being paid through a Pomelo pitch or someone was contracting with you to do EOS marketing, it wouldn't make sense to me because there's no way I could sell EOS and make a commission. You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's nothing to sell. You know what I'm saying? Like a stave on stress EVM isn't ready. You know, what am I going to tell them to do? What is, what's nothing? There's it? nothing, man. Nothing. Yeah. It's, just, uh, it's a hobby. Yeah, exactly. So unless fucking the ENF wants to just kick down some money and say, go, Doug, go do something. You know, there's really no way I can really make money off of EOS, except if I convert the traffic away from the EOS and into something that I can sell, which is education, essentially. But strangely, the education I want to sell, I don't even want to sell it. I want to give it away for free because I want to invest more to get the traffic in the participation of building something that is uh, based on prepensation and recycled uh waste of, of recycling of wasted resources so the biggest wasted resource i'd like to recycle is the hearts and minds of people on this planet their labor efforts that can be tapped into a process that allows their greatest creative expression to be released and not people working at stupid fucking mcdonald's jobs the things that are going to be replaced by robots soon anyways and ai and shit you know where they don't like it anyways who wants to work for fucking Amazon and rush around a lot to all that shit? You know what I'm saying? And what value is that? Look how easily replaceable you are. What I want is to bring out the best of people, the best ideas, the best ways of interaction. And I want all the options placed on the table. And I want to examine them all myself personally and index it and, and calculate this all, but have the participation of a group of people. You know what I'm saying? To help define that process. Because I need... Because there's no way I can do it alone. You know what I'm saying? I need the group. But at the same time, I sort of have a very specific vision, a very specific direction, very specific intent that I want, a way that I want to move. And if people are willing to move with me, that's great. And if they're not willing to move with me, that's great too. Because I don't need to move with them. I could just move without them or move around them or move by them or whatever. All I just need is some people to play play this sort of like thing with me so it's sort of like it's perfect this thing practically is perfect because everyone like you or it's like this is sort of like a social experiment so it's sort of like they're doing their social experiment to bootstrap practically well they didn't know no one told them that Doug Lou's actually bootstrapping his own business model within practically use using their infrastructure to catapult off of you know just like practically is sort of built on EOS in some sense you know oh, yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody's using it for different reasons. You know, look at Douglas Buntner, man. He's 
he's after something, you know? It's pretty interesting though, isn't it? Totally. I mean, dude, you should be like, we could, this is like, the, this is like potentially a novel too, you know? Like our life stories of what we see. Like, let's make this blow up one way or another. Let's either, if this thing doesn't fucking make it to the moon or long term, like really take off, then it's like got to be the biggest rug pull scam or some fucking <laughs> fucked up thing to where like we just got to fucking dig our dig deep and like expose it for what it is or make it expose it for the beautiful thing it is or the horrible thing it is. But like, don't let it be mediocre. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's push this baby and you know, into the, into that zone where we give it its best chance. And by doing that, if we give it its best chance and it fails horribly, then we got to say it wasn't our fault. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind um, the ENF making the salaries of everybody that they uh, have working for them uh, very public. Well, you know, what's interesting. I'm pretty sure if you, in the state or in the, the ENF is incorporated as a nonprofit in Canada. A, a, a business in, in America is in profit, incorporated as a nonprofit. I should be able to get their tax returns for any calendar year for 1099s because that should be publicly disclosed. And I don't know if that's the case for Canadian corporations or nonprofit foundations or corporations, but it may be. Um, but when I've tried to look up the lawsuit, Obviously, there isn't one so far. And what I think with that, and I might be wrong, how many times have you ever thought of a situation where something high stakes was involved, somebody threatens with a lawsuit, but after a certain period of time, they don't follow through? Does that mean that they're still planning on following through with a lawsuit? Because my experience is with law, people don't premeditatedly tell others they're going to, they don't threaten them and posture. They're going to do something. They're just going to do it. You know what I'm mean? saying? You know, you get the notice from the registered agent. You know what I'm saying? You don't get the notice from all these blog reports and news articles saying, talking about it. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's media posturing. And even though you might actually intend to sue, okay, you don't just do those things accidentally if you're considering to file a lawsuit. You don't just, oh, I didn't think about that. Maybe we shouldn't have put it on the website. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it with explicit intent. Especially if you have attorneys involved, right? Should you not? So to me, regardless of what's happening on their posturing, that still might mean that they're going to move in with a lawsuit, but that also could mean that it's not a posturing so much to create fear in B1 as a posturing to create enthusiasm and positive energy and hope for token holders and for community members and for people to feel empowered or we're taking back control and we're doing all this, right? But how long can you say that and not act on it and then not make sense from a legal strategy and from a trust strategy and from a What's the normal convention and way this happens? Strategy, you get what I'm saying? Can you yeah. think of an instance with a big business deal in the millions or billions of dollars where they said, we're going to sue you, but then they didn't follow through like within months? Yeah. <laughs> you know what That's I'm saying? Kids in the schoolyard. I'm going to sue you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the deal. You know what? You got to understand. Who's saying what? Who's, who's, who's suing? Who's threatening who? Kids in the schoolyard, yeah, right? Well, is the big kid or the small kid or the median kid or the normal kid saying, I'm going to sue you? And the person who's the you he's talking to is, is that a big kid or a small kid? What I think it is, is a, is a small kid, the new kid with the stunted growth on the block telling the old big boy who's got lots of family and fucking friends and fucking inbred, you know, money, you know, the big fucking inbred kid, like he's... I'm going to sue you to that guy, knowing that guy's got a big ass family with lots of money out in the Cayman Islands. But it's like, oh, yeah, motherfucker, go right ahead and try. Because we didn't fucking rug pull you thinking that you might not just say that. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, how stupid does that fucking sound? Like, oh God, we're scared mm-hmm. of you because we didn't think you might say that. You know what I'm saying? To me, it sounds more like a fucking soap opera. It sounds like a fucking script. You know what I'm saying? And then when Emma starts saying control the opposition to me and EOS Gov, I'm like, yeah, that's a narrative that I've considered quite, you know, for some time, but I've never spoken that. Well, I'll tell you, Nathan James coming on is a big deal because he has like this, I don't know how you call it, something like this texture that totally represents being responsible and on your own and decentralized and a punk and you know smart and and him coming on is like wow they got nathan james to come back he he was he was working on like ultra he still is probably maybe he's gonna just kind of double up on salary but anyway he's got an enormous amount of uh, to give so uh uh just his sponsorship alone just his sponsorship of the of eos alone well, what is he's doing developer relations, right? Yeah. So is that like onboarding developers or something? I think it's bringing developers into a place that they can find a footing. So without getting side barred by the history or the complexity or misunderstandings, he's a great connector. Well, you know what was really creepy? As I was in this EOS Gov thing, working out all this stuff, and Phoenix got in there too. Phoenix started messaging me directly. And as he, as I was just about to ask him about Nathan James, because I realized he was named director, he started talking about Nathan James. And I didn't even think he knew about the director thing. I don't yet. But anyways, I'm not sure. So this is a really interesting dialogue that's going on in here in this group right now well well nathan has a brother ramey who is doing all of the front end ui for ultra blockchain they decided not to join the eosio coalition ultra so rami was part of those meetings and is no more <laughs> that's nathan james brother Oh, really? Interesting. So this is what I was looking for. EOSIO Plus documents. Remember the videos of EOSIO Plus? Core, the core group? Yeah, yeah. That's Ramey. His face is all over those videos. He was publishing them on his site, Ramey James. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Nathan James is Ramey's brother, and Nathan James is the dog. Well, then Ramey came, like, after James, after... uh, Nathan N.S. James, Nathan James, after he built Scatter and Scatter Wallet was like the the thing that was going to make, basically it made EOS excellent and it had all the promise in the world because this was like an alpha beta version that was great and that it was just going to get funded, uh, no more funding. So Nathan was one of the guys that really took it. never being able to monetize anything crazily and then um, his brother comes on and says i'm going to read you the universe user interface of, of scatter and honestly it sucked and then ramey james is like we're building some real cool stuff at ultra and i guess that project is going well uh, that's about all i know but uh Um, my thought was that Nathan built Scatter, I mean, uh, Ultra blockchain, but I don't know. Still a good bet for money. Maybe, I mean, uh, Nathan James is such a, a great get 
for the ENF. I wonder if that was one of the guys that Dan Larimer said that the ENF poached from his fractally team. Was it what? I wonder if Nathan James was one of the guys that Dan Larimer said that Eves poached. Oh. From the fractally effort. But even that message from Dan sounded like it came from a place of weakness. But Dan just kind of says things in a good way to get it off his chest. You know, I think it's probably more strength than weakness, you know. I could see him laughing, saying, Eves keeps poaching my dudes, but at the same time, keeps saying, please stop poaching my dudes. I want these guys to build my shit. A really interesting move, us not giving him $3.4 million to refuck the code. Interesting decision. <laughs> Look what I did here. I sort of fucked with them. So did you see Douglas Butler's shirts? Stuff he made? Is only I don't, the only shirt I've ever seen in Douglas Bunter is a tank top. <laughs> okay, no, he's look t-shirts, practically shirts. Look, he made these graphics. All okay? right. Now look at this. These are the graphics he made. Close up of all art, original OC fractal layered with his OC sacred geometry patterns. He explains about the techniques, explains about it. So then I make this thing. Hell yeah, right? <laughs> and I'm all like. Oh, just wondering now, is it fractally incorporated as an LLC? And regardless if they are or not, don't they have to agree or allow of your use of their possibly trademarked copyright and copywritten property? Or are you surrendering your creative talents and assets with no clear expectation in the booths? Like, are you saying you're making t-shirts and selling them? Or did you just make these graphics to, you know, like have someone else make the t-shirts and sell them? You know, are you just giving them, the way, donating it away? Are revenue streams and capital budgets disclosed and how will they be used? Are decisions made based on a two-third consensus vote or through the governance structures inherent to the respective forms of organizations in which they participate? Just curious, great fractal, great fractal graphics. So I'll give you a fucking kiss, kiss with the lips, infinity heart for respect. <laughs> so then, disclaimer, emojis do not contain any real or transferable value Unless, of course, of an imaginary state in which imaginary things can produce real effects in both predictable and unpredictable outcomes. Mm -hmm. I consider this as valuable a contribution as a Rashomon effect and better understanding the nature and mechanisms behind maximizing mutual benefit in organic human or organization coordination interactions. <laughs> what do you think about that, dude? I think it's perfect, man. What is the Rajamon effect again? Oh, that's Patrick's whole thing. Dude, I really like it. It's the three versus four on that poll meme where one looking at four, one looking at three could look at the same thing and two people can have a different worldview. Is that right? Probably, yeah. It's something like that. Six, nine. Yeah, okay. That That is it. That is No, no, go back to the memes, man. It, it shows you it. Oh, I was going to post it in there. This thing, that one, yeah, that one, six nine. That's the oh, best. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. I've never seen that. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. So now watch what I do here. Let's see if we can do this. Show you a little trick. Yeah, I never it. saw Rashomon. I've got to go see that. I, I've been wanting to see it for like twenty years. That's a Kurosawa flick. Do you know? Are you right familiar now. with that? No idea. No, he made the best samurai movies ever. George Lucas took all of his lightsaber scenes from Akira Kurosawa. Sure, but it's a little late, but maybe I can speak. Maybe no one will notice. That was a good one. Real good. <clears throat> yeah, you basically see two things totally differently. 
I love it. I love it. He does still work for Ultra. Where did you find that out? Eden the OS. Where? Where does it say it? Is it right there? Okay. I'm looking at Joe Lewis's thing. Here. No, I still don't see that, but I, I trust you, you saw it. No, uh, you want to see the other thing, um, this thing. He will still work on Ultra. Yeah, yeah. Does this mean uh, Scatterwalt will have the feature? Not really. No fuck no, actually. Oh, look, they're using WordPress, dude. That's hilarious. Ooh. That's what they did. They went back from Web 3 to Web 2, I bet. That's what they did. They took my advice. Oh. Not that I offered it. But the old website name was EOSN.foundation. This address, I'm pretty sure, was like, the same way they built like Blocks.io and all the other blockchain websites with this JavaScript, jQuery, or whatever. We're a new website. Maybe it was WordPress because it has the same URL structure. I don't know. Maybe they just changed the theme. I never looked, looked at it close enough. But see, if you go here now, Mark, it just redirects. It just goes back to the OS network. So now what is this? Oh, that's a yield plus blue paper. So now what we do, is we come over here, then we go to EOS index, EOS index. And now I need to fix this this page. It's all screwed up. All the menus don't need to be there. I need to start deleting things. That's just a bunch of like, uh, what do they call that? So this one is yield plus. Right, I'll come back and deal with that. So that's like a bookmark, a draft I just saved. So now I can, that'll be indexed. This one I want to put on open stage because I can make a this into a news article. You know what I'm saying? Not a news article, like an opinion piece. Like I could talk about the Rashomon effect and talk about Patrick always talking about the Rashomon effect and how I experienced the Rashomon effect or how that plays out. And then that's now like some sort of little silly little article, you know. You should watch the Carousel flick uh, if you're going to do that because that's not a bad idea. Let's put the link up there for it too, then, huh? So if other people can. Yeah, Carousel was a fucking master. Okay, so let's see, Carousel. Oh yeah, that's right. That was the guy. That was the whole thing. Uh, how do you spell it? Curacao. As it sounds, Curacao. Um, the Samurai Trilogy. Did you ever uh, see the Masashi Samurai Trilogy? It was so good. Samurai Trilogy. Oh, yeah. Nice spelling. I'm going to write a little article, okay, on the Rashomon effect, and I'm going to mention you and Patrick, okay? 
And so basically it's going to be like this, is that uh, that the Rashomon effect was introduced to me by Patrick. And then, and then my friend Mark basically recommended I watch this movie and then I put a link to it. Like I'll have a little write up, just not nothing big, but I just want to be able to link to you guys to create eventually like a, a, either a way to direct traffic to you. You know, like when I, like for example, Mark Shear, I could send people that click on that to markshear.net. And then Patrick, I could like direct them to like if he has an about page on his mind website or something. So like these little posts not only educate people about this Rashomon effect, which is an interesting topic to understand and how this plays out in group settings, but also I can get some SEO value for you guys out of it, you know, while providing it just, just by virtue of the fact that I have this whole belief of like how you come across information is unique to you and it has a lineage. And so I inherited this idea of Rashomon effect. It was the first time in my life that I can remember hearing about it from Patrick. It's very rare for me at my age to be introduced to new ideas that I've never heard of before when I'm always looking for new information, like having this. And so for him to say something like that and for you to validate it, that now demonstrates that both of you have awareness towards that type of state of idea and consciousness. And so that thing, this Rashomon effect is like, I, I sort of have this kind of viewpoint that like ideas are like living things. They're like seeds that can grow. And once the energy comes uh, formed in the, in the structure of the mind under the, uh, the, the use of language or, um, or uh, understanding of some sort, then that thing has the potential to, to self bootstrap. Well, um, you know what I'm saying? That to grow and to, to self reinforce that kind of thinking. Well, people don't have actually have ideas. Ideas actually have people. Right, right, right. Right, that, right. That's, that, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, right, right. I and mean, that's really, um, it go, and that's quantifiable to the core uh, through all of the idea of identity and all that comes the word, the very most core symbiological like idea that we assimilate to, you know, we mirror, like we copy. Oh, look, you can watch the whole thing here. Oh, okay, wow. Now. So now, do they have an embed? Oh, that'd be Probably awesome. Not. They have a link. Nice. Yeah, that's good enough. If they watch that whole movie on your website, would you get time? value yeah exactly well sort of yeah absolutely do you do you track all that how absolutely. long people... absolutely okay in fact i i switched to plausible which i never used before i usually use google and i think my thing just so my trial is about to end i'm not sure what happens I think, I think like, uh, oh yeah, it goes to $9 a month. I might switch, I might switch. I need to get a, my own analytics server going or something maybe. I switched to this because Michael Bywire suggested and I decided I don't like it now. Um, free, non-Google analytics tracker. Hmm. Well, hey, man, I think I'm going to be wrapping it up here. Like, All right. We'll check you out later then. I'm just going to be wearing it on the web. Yeah, that was great. Great. Uh, Great evening. Yeah.
Take care. Yeah, yeah you too. Bye.